Hello guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here, back with yet another 100% achievement and trophy guide, and this is a real good one, in the terms of The Sinking City, a game developed by Frogways, published by Big Ben Interactive, and is available for £49.99, but of course you can either wait for a sale, or that it goes on Game Pass, or goes on Games with Gold eventually. Now this is the unofficial sequel to Call of Cthulhu, which I also have a 100% guide for, I'll leave the link in the description for that. But honestly, it does improve over Call of Cthulhu in so many ways, which I will explain just a little bit later on. Now a few things to explain then before I begin. Obviously, it's quite a big game, it's going to take you around 15-20 to 20 hours to complete. It's not just an hour game you can easily smash out. So quite a bit through the game, you'll see me standing still for a, sort of a few short seconds or, you know, there's, there's quite a few edits in the game. Again, that's purely for looking at my notes I have prepared in order to get the full 1000 and platinum as quickly as we can. But apologies if that can get quite annoying. Now, I skip all the cutscenes, all the dialogues, and I edit down the loading times just for time. Uh, also, with this bit, because there's no difficulty... Um, related achievement we're just going to smash everything on easy so uh, you don't have to but you know it's easy enough for us isn't it <laughs> um, but yeah with the loading times they can take around a minute to a minute and a half each time so I cut down the loading times on that as well but again you know you should watch everything as it is another top interesting story in this game very very good and while we're going from place to place in the open world I won't be talking much through that sort of only now and again in the beginning as we get a feel for the game and I show you different mechanics of the game, etc, etc. So, with that being said then, let's begin. So you start off on this ship, but just before we begin totally, basically I have bought the DLC version for the game and the DLC for the one extra skill point, which you will see me use straight away now. Um, and for having the machine gun straight away. Now these are not really needed, but they do help us basically straight away as the skill point I put in gives us extra XP. So it's this one, mind, right here. And it is the ability to get us five extra XP points. So again, it's not particularly needed, but it can help us along basically in the early parts of the game if you want to do that. So then, we begin on a ship, and basically in every area we enter, we have to do some investigating, sort of searching for evidence, etc. Now, as you can see, you can just collect the key evidence and move on. But it's always worth grabbing all the secondary and additional evidence too, as that is what gets you the full XP from that area. So you'll see me collecting everything possible anyway, so there's no worries about that. Uh, but this bit just gives you a feel for that. So you need to pick up your pistol and a letter from the desk in front of you to begin with, which you've already seen me doing. Now to access your weapon wheel, you need to press the LB, the left bumper, or L1 on the PlayStation button to get any guns or your camera as we take this picture. This is classed as additional evidence. Uh, also, once you get a gun for the first time, you press the X or square on the PS4 button to reload. Now... And now we see, because we got all the all the additional evidence collected, that's where we get the XP. Now next up then is lootables, and you'll see this like hashtag sign on loads of crates and lockers, etc. throughout the world. Now you press and hold A next to it to get a random assortment of items. It is random each time, but the reason we need to loot every box we can is because ammo is scarce. So we need to be able to craft a lot of ammo while also trying not to use a lot. So, once we head outside then, we will be talking to Johannes Vanderberg. Now, he'll be a prominent figure throughout the game. We'll be seeing him quite a lot. And, like like I said, I'll be smashing through most of the dialogue. Obviously, you can just keep watching it if you want, seeing what they have to say a lot. There are a lot of interesting things that happen with um, certain dialogues, but, you know, you can just keep smashing through all the dialogues. Um, what I try to do usually is just pick the dialogue options we need to just progress rather than go through everything so yeah just keep an eye out for that and obviously I'll be letting you know anyway so I just completely talked over that but now we can finally move on thanks for helping no no the pleasure what how don't worry so now we can begin the game properly. Now, to sprint, you have to press the right trigger or the R2 button again on the PlayStation. That will help us 
um, begin. We won't be seeing the open world map just yet. We've got a mission to do first. Now, there's a left and right to take. Now, where we'll be going first, then, is a left, just to collect a few little bits of additional evidence to help us get, again, a little bit more XP. And it's just this ship area down here. Now, again, another thing to note through the game. Here's the map, then. So, it's quite a chunky map, but we'll be able to fast travel as we progress. And again, I'll come to that a little bit later on. But... Just like in Call of Cthulhu, if you did ever play Call of Cthulhu, you would have noticed your sanity and certain things that happen throughout the game um, sort of mess up your sanity quite a bit. So um, press the A button next to this little bit of evidence, which is on the side of the boat. That's the name. And as you will see with this diving helmet, you see there's two bars there, and the greyer looking one will start going down. That is basically your sanity mode. And if it gets... If your sanity goes down too much, you will actually be attacked by shadow monsters. Um, you can just easily hit them with your shovel using the R1 button or the right bumper. But you've got to be very mindful of that. But it does, if you just stand there and wait for a couple of minutes, your sanity will eventually just go back up anyway. So that will be, again, a prominent sort of key mechanic throughout the game. So from the boat then, there's only three bits of evidence, hopefully you got them all, and now we will speak to Robert Throgmorton here, who again will be another prominent figure through the game. The name's Charles Reed. I'm a private investigator. If I may ask, what happened to your son? Why do you care? What? Well, like... Is it? What says he was barely... And you don't believe... Complete. Albert's disap... I take it you're not the biggest fan. Those fish-faced freaks have overrun this, but now... So they're just... <laughs> Hardly. Not to mention the crime rate. I've heard you're the man to speak to about... visions. Outbreaks of this... Another newcomer with an... Can I ask you a... How oh, dare you. My son... Mr. Throgmorton. Let me help you. What makes you think you can... Let's just say... Vera. I need to know more about... Tame. Did you not listen at all? This fisherman... Anything else? Clearly. As much as I'm enjoying the weather, Mr. Find my son, newcomer, and be quick about it. So as you probably noticed then, all I picked was the dialogue options that helped us progress rather than go through absolutely everything. So just, you know, press what I press when we're talking to different characters and, you know, you'll have no worries. But uh, now we'll go into the fisherman's house then. There's no monsters or anything to attack us just yet. We'll be coming up to that shortly. But go straight ahead and through to the first room then. We will be getting a few bits of additional evidence there. This dog, uh, this dog bed. So basically, if you, you know, have a good look around every room and things you enter, you'll know you'll be at any lootables or additional evidence because, of course, it'll have a little uh, symbol that we can interact with. And obviously, if something doesn't have a symbol, obviously you can't interact with it. So, you know, but pretty simple, pretty simple to um, get and understand, really. So again, press and hold the A button next to any lootable objects and we get a couple of things again. Might be the same for you, usually it'll be sort of small random items though. So there's nothing else really to investigate on this floor. We'll be going up to the second floor where all the key evidence and things start to happen for us now. It would take tremendous effort to move this thing, let alone tossing it over like this. <laughs> Let's see what you find, newcomer. So as I said just a little bit earlier on then, so witnessing gruesome events like dead bodies, as soon as you um, click on dead bodies and, and things like that, you do lose a chunk of your sanity meter. And if you stand close to dead bodies for too long, again, that'll drain your sanity meter as well. So just back away and wait for it to refill back up then. And then you should be absolutely good to go. There's a diving helmet here, but again, that's not classed as any additional evidence. There is a bunch of cards on the table here. 
So again, you know, I won't be talking entirely through every investigation scene, you know, really just the important things. You just sort of, you just keep following what I'm doing. Um, if obviously there's no monsters and everything, just follow what I'm doing, click on what I'm clicking on. And you really shouldn't have too much of an issue. Um, again, sometimes there might be only a couple of things to investigate. Sometimes there might be quite a few. But I'll only pipe up when it's really, really necessary. Whew, tell you what, there's a few things to get through, mate. <laughs> Never seen knives like this before. Masterful work. Well, and that didn't last long, did it? So I'm back. Basically, we have a power called Mind's Eye. Now, certain items throughout the game, and quite a bit through the game as well, you need to press down on the D pad to basically see what happened preceding that event or why that item was there if you get my meaning so Charles basically has a better understanding of what really happened so again but again of course that will drain your sanity meter as well so you don't want to be in the mind's eye vision for too long so again if you're sort of halfway down or you see these creatures starting to attack you get out of your mind's eye and that will obviously refill your sanity meter back up so again, you can have a look all around. A um, couple of lootables of me in different rooms. But, you know, just again, like I said, I'll only pipe up when it's necessary. You don't want to hear my sexy voice for too long, do you? <laughs> I mean, you may see me going over things or going around rooms once, maybe twice. That is obviously just to make sure that we have got everything that we can possibly get. Um, oh. But the last thing is, we just need to talk to this guy. It's okay. I'm but again, oh. this time you'll just be able to smash through the I entire know. dialogue. I don't. But then he came back. Then what? We put the guy on loose and. He... Tell me about yourself. Uh, names. We move. Where are all the other. Uh, that's Paul. and I have no. Do you know how Paul died? I. Who is this K? Outside, of show some respect. Sorry, I'll leave you to it. Please, detective. So... I don't know yet, Will. So we're very quickly about to learn about two new things. The first one is retrocognition. See that blue tear there? Usually, after you collect a lot of key evidence, all the key evidence, this will happen and we'll be able to piece together exactly what happened in that area. Now this next one is called Mind Palace, which will be able to match pairs of clues together to make deductions. So really, by the end of each mission, you should attempt to match all of the clues together to make every possible Mind Palace deduction. So the first one then is Albert Returned Unstable and Sudden Psychotic Outbreak. And again, for other ones then, all you just have to do is, you know, just copy exactly what I do to get the correct ones. Again, if you follow in the video, you should have the correct ones that I do. So. We, now we're going to start this retrocognition, and basically what will happen, you'll see like these little bits of floating dark balls in the area, and then these white shadowy figures will appear with a bit of dialogue. So now, usually there'll only be about three to four in each retrocognition, but again, this will help Charles piece together exactly what will happen. So go through all of, you'll have to go through each and every one, and then you'll be able to go to each ball and uh, press the A button, and that will sort of determine a sort of number. So the first one is in the bedroom with uh, uh, what's happening. The second one is in the middle of the room, so just press A next to the ball. And then the third and final one then will be where the uh, copper and the other guy is. So you'll know again if you've got it correct because Charles will come out then with a bit of dialogue of what actually happened. If obviously you don't get it right, then that doesn't happen. And now, as you can see on the right uh, on the right hand side, we've got a mind palace clue for us to deduce. So just again, copy exactly what I do, piece together all the clues what I do, and you should have not a lot of issues.
By the way, when you get onto this particular page, you can just press the Y button to go straight back to the clues there. So that shouldn't, again, be a problem. Only little things, but little things help us out, right? And we've got something else for us to learn now. So, again, quite a few times through the game, if you press the down on the D-pad, you will see it's what's called an omen. Now, some you can follow these omens to, again, e whether it's key evidence or just additional evidence or anything like that. But basically, it can be in the shape of humans or squids or birds, anything like that. And you'll notice that you can do that when there is sort of wavy lines across the screen. So again, I'll quite hard to, quite easy to miss actually sometimes. So I'll obviously let you know. But there we go. So it's pointing at the floor for us right now, and it'll sort of glow red. So this is something that we could have easily missed, but due to following these um, black shadowy figures, we have found these um, bullet shell casings, which is good for us. But of course, you're pressing down on the D-pad, going into mind's eye, your sanity's draining away. So again, be very mindful and careful of that, just in case we get attacked by these shadowy figures. There's a lootable in this car for us here, so we can grab a few things. And then you can just simply go back into mind's eye and follow the omens again. After doing this mind palace deduction, of course. <laughs> So head out of that, press down on the D-pad once again, and we can continue to follow these human shadowy dudes. And by the way, don't worry, the funny is coming. The crap talking hilarity will be on its way, but you know, there's a hell of a lot to <laughs> learn about and get through first. But uh, don't worry, I've got all the crap talk in my head ready to go. Um, so we followed these shadowy figures now to a door. Now usually, you see the H symbol on there? That is where usually we will need to go in every mission so if you ever get stuck you can press the uh, go into mind's eye and search, uh, look at that h symbol for us and that will tell us where we need to go now again a couple of items in this warehouse to pick up the additional and key evidence again you can read all the notes if you want or you know you don't have to but they're in if you press the start menu and scroll over to law that is where you'll see all the things you've collected etc etc So now we will be coming up to our first monster called a Stygian. They're basically massive spider looking things, which will jump from side to side and just attack you very slowly. So you can attack these. There's no need to waste bullet on these. Do not waste any ammo on these guys. They usually come out, out of the ground with a weird shriek. So that's all you have to do. On those little creepy looking assholes, um, <laughs> You never have to waste ammo on it, so it's just very vital that you don't just whack him with a shovel and you should be good to go. So this is where Robert Throgmorton's son is then, he's sort of hanging, and we've got to start making decisions of, did his murderer do it because he was out of his mind, or did he do it because he wanted to? Now, all the evidence clearly suggests that he was slightly out of his mind, but he was in full control and he knew exactly what he was doing. One clean bullet through the head, that usually tells me that he was in control. So again, if you ever see a padlock on a door, by the way, never waste a bullet on it, just smack it with your shovel and that should be good to go. And also, anytime you find key evidence, that is where you will get clues that gets put into your mind palace for you to be able to deduce and match things up. So yeah, again, you'll know exactly, you sort of should have, start to get quite a, a bit, a big idea of it quite quickly. But, yeah, I'm pretty sure that is the sort of all of the basics of it. I think until something else comes up, which I've probably forgotten to tell you, so, <laughs> you know, my bad about that. 
Oh, we can get a funny straight away. Why does Charles Reed have a backpack like a six-year-old? <laughs> Ever see any other game characters do that? <laughs> so then, um, from the right from the warehouse then, now we go into under the keel bar. We'll be speaking to Mr. Ape Face in just a little bit. Tetley's T, I'm going to call him for the rest of it. And this is your first location that, well, not your first, your first proper tidy location, I suppose. Um, talk to Billy here. You don't have to, but we'll be um, meeting him a little bit later on. Um, it's up to you if you think he looks like a good guy or a bad guy. I ain't seeing nothing. And we'll be getting our first achievement right here. So go to the right at the back, you see this woman. She's basically a fortune teller. She talks a whole bunch of crap exactly like I do, but at least my crap makes sense. Um, uh, press do tell basically will be giving her a bullet because bullets and cigarettes and things like that are the actual currency here, so give her a bullet. This shouldn't be too much of a problem. You ain't gonna miss a bullet, honestly. Not yet, anyway. Okay, future told, achievement unlocks, listen to the crap, job done. You listen to me enough, so you shouldn't have no problem listening to the crap. Pillars, circled by the dead. Thank you, I'll keep that. You are welcome. I can't wait to see what you do. Embrace your fate. So with that slight little bit of entertainment first done then, <laughs> head on over to the barman. Basically, we're just after trying to find out where Lewis Flynn is. He is upstairs. We know that. Or, actually, we don't know that yet, obviously. Um, but again, with normally with any dialogue options, again, just choose the same ones I do. There's not that many points during the game where dialogue options make too much of a difference but of course I will pipe up with the ones that do make a difference so for instance with Lewis Flynn upstairs he will offer us a bribe if you take that bribe you will just get four bullets but again because you've told him you'll think about it as we'll see in a minute doesn't necessarily mean that's exactly what you're going to do so actions speak louder than words and that is extremely true for this game so just in the back here then, go grab some lootables before we head on upstairs. What the? Get them! Oh. And if you thought you had a surprise with Robert Throgmorton being an ape, a Tetley's teabag advert guy, just wait. Hey, who are you? Oh my god, he's a fish face! So, apparently, Oakmont has humans, <laughs> Tetley tea monkeys, and fish creatures with human bodies all about. Just because. Just because, why the hell not? Something happened here, and it messed with people. You know, these guys are actually called Innsmouthers. And, basically, there's a whole bunch of race war stuff going on. As you would imagine with apes and fishes, because, you know, that's been, <laughs> that's been the mega war for centuries, right? No. Uh, well, I, and me, uh, covered in blood. The things you did to Albert don't look like a bloody... One might start to... Well, I don't know what to say. I hear there's a bit of a feud between the Innsmouthers... Those apes hated us from the moment we... The Blackwood Grand Family Shelter. And so... We had to fight for every crumb of bread. Always conspiring behind our... You mentioned a grand family. <laughs> so you're... Yeah, a new... Okay. There's the carpenters who control... And let me... Right. Those filth... I think I've... Please, Mr. Reed. Don't tell Throgmorton about me. So again, this next dialogue option, tell Lewis you'll think about it and you'll receive four bits of ammo for us, for our pistol, which will come in handy. Perhaps I can offer something to grease your grinds. It turns out I arrived here unprepared for business. I knew you'd understand. So that's all the evidence collected then, so we will just do a mind palace deduction now as to what you think really happened. So, you know, again, it's completely up to you whether you think that Lewis did it out of his mind or whether he was actually in full control. But if you go and tell Robert Throgmorton, 
that Lewis is alive and he's in the bar. Basically, a whole race war will start and he will actually attack loads of random Innsmouthers for no reason. Whereas, if you tell him that Lewis is already dead and he's nowhere to be seen, he gets a bit angry at it, but he obviously leaves innocent people alone. So, your actions do have consequences. But very importantly, they do not affect achievements. So, if there was anything that does affect an achievement, obviously I will say, but your actions, whether you think someone's guilty or whoever you decide to choose with, they usually don't affect achievements, so don't go worrying about that. So now we'll head on back to the Tetley's Teabag Man, and then just choose the same dialogue options that I do. Unless, of course, you don't want to, then <laughs> that's up to you, whether you decide to tell him that Lewis is alive or not. Mr. Throg... Yeah. I found your son in the basement of a nearby warehouse. Um, I've tracked down your son's murder. Where? Who is he? I tracked the murderer down, but he was attacked by those things, probably. It was that Innsmouther fisherman, Lewis. Are you certain? Beyond any doubt. All that's left of him is a... Alas, this was my revenge to exact, not still justice has been served. Mr. Throg... Yes, you've earned it, but I digress. Remind me... I... I think I was drawn here, or... You're not wrong, Mr. Reed. I funded an exp... A geological expedition? I have reason to believe the flood and this... Has your expedition found anything? I do not know. Albert is... You think your son was killed because... Is it so hard to... It does... Mr. E. If I'm going to look into this... I'll give you the address. That's all... Let me be clear. I'm sorry, Mr. Throckmorton. I am a busy man. When you've finished, come see me at the Throckmorton. My they will be reimbursed after you complete your task. I'll also... Uh, the dollar lost its use here, Mr. Reed. After... So if you followed me, your actions mean loads of fish-faced people will not get gutted by the Planet of the Apes leader right here. And we get our second achievement of the game. So everyone's a winner, right? I'm pretty sure, even though you just lied to the ape man about his son being murdered and stuff like that. So now we can move on and we start seeing the whole map and use the whole open worldedness, if that's even a word. But you get what I mean. But it's just like any other game, you know, there's locations that get marked on your map, you press the A button to mark where you want to go, and voila! Simple stuffs, right? <laughs> but actually, with an added note, what you can do in this game is go into your case book from the start menu, Say you have an address or a piece of evidence you need to follow up on, you can then press Y to place that particular evidence on the map so you can easily follow it. So as you will soon see, I do exactly that for our first address. Again though, it's a very simple mechanic to use. Now this is our hotel room then, in the Devil's Reef Hotel. We'll sort of come back here a few times throughout the game, but again, there's quite a few bits of evidence we need to collect, so again, follow and pick up exactly what I do to get your additional XP. But a very important note to add to this bit. So, like I said, I bought the DLC version, the game, the main game of the DLC version of this. So because I brought that, next to the table there's like a little lootable thing and every time I go in there, there is a first aid kit and an antipsychotic basically helps with your sanity. But that will not be there if you did not get the DLC version of this game. So that's a very important thing to note there. So here's our wardrobe then, you know, 
nothing really makes a difference, but anything's better than looking like a six-year-old with a backpack, am I right? <laughs> but yes, very important to note that one. So every time you come back to your hotel room, if you've got the DLC version of the game, there will always be a first aid kit. But if even if you haven't got it, that won't matter too much as we should scavenge, scavenge, sorry, even, <laughs> we should scavenge enough uh, lootables to be able to consistently craft enough first aid kits to keep us going. So, like I said, don't worry if you haven't got this, you'll still have plenty of first aid kits available to you anyway if you are following this guide. Makes this place feel more like home. I miss Boston already. So yeah, as I've said before then, obviously even if we're in a big building like this, there will be like lootables and things for us to collect in different parts of of the building. So if, if you think where the hell is he going, trust me, there is method to my madness. And another note, if, again, if you purchase the DLC version of this game, this is where the lootable box will become available. If you didn't purchase the DLC box, that lootable uh, little cabinet will not be available. So that's just another, just another word of warning, just in case you're figuring out why I've got it and you potentially haven't. So yeah, again, like I said, if if you follow me around and you're thinking, where the hell's he off? There's always a method to my madness, and we're always going to be finding something. So keep on the following me. So even we're going upstairs now, and you're probably thinking, what, what the fudge are we going up here for now? There's always method to my madness. Always. Uh, <laughs> but, but we're getting just some evidence. Bit of XP for us, you know? Finally, you're awake. Gotta tell you, though, mister. Noise? What? I expect my... Uh, yeah. Yeah, well... You're not exactly friendly with your guests. Aren't we the ones keeping you... All these newcomers after the... What do you mean? You can't imagine the crazy no... Can I have a look? I knew it. I tell you no. Um, can't tell if that guy's fish or human. But anyway, he's basically said, look, here's a side case if you want to do that. What we are going to be doing to get all of the achievements is we'll be doing the first eight out of nine main missions, and then we'll only be doing three side missions which have achievements related to that. That's just me. Um, we obviously get enough ammo and, and everything to get us through the game with no problems at all but obviously if you want to do any of these side cases yourself obviously you can crack on but again be warned they're not in this video there's only three side cases that I do and they are in my part two and part three videos so but again you know if you want to do it for, for the extra XP and the extra ammo you be my guest you carry on with that So now we'll be learning about fast travel points now, they're basically phone booth looking things which we'll have to actually get near one around the world to be able to unlock that, to be able to fast travel to that location. You should know how fast travel locations usually work but that's how it does here. And this is how we can map, uh, mark the evidence on the map, so in your casebook press the white button, that'll then go to your map and then as you see at the bottom there it'll have like a little um, 
introduction of the mission we'll be doing or what we need to get. Uh, and then you just press the A button where I'm going to mark it and then we can follow it on the mini map at the top of our screen. So obviously try and get it to exactly where I do and basically where the text box was at the bottom of the screen there. Um, you can actually move move it across right and left with the right stick. And also another very good point, if you do place a marker, make sure to delete it with the A button and then press down on the right stick whether to edit or delete it. If you've got too many on the map, you'll literally be <laughs> wandering around for freaking ages, wondering where the hell you are. So, yeah, as long as you finish with one, just delete that bit. Now... Another point is a lot of these streets are flooded, so a lot of a lot of the time we'll be using boat, which, by the way, to move you press the left stick up to go forward, uh, left stick back to go backwards, and obviously uh, left and right to go left and right. If you do end up uh, somehow in the water and there's no way you can get out, be, be mindful there are man-eating eels in that water. So if you stay in there for too long, you're going to get fudged up by man-eating eels. So if you can. Don't swim, because well, swim is no good for anyone apart from swimming Olympic athletes. You know what I mean? So, um, But otherwise, to see a lot of this dreary stuff around the streets of Oakmont, there'll be nothing really to do. Um, there, are, there are infested zones, which, again, I'll come up to a little bit later on. But basically, you want to stay clear. As soon as you see an infested zone, you just want to steer clear of them, because there's... Nothing good to be had, only, um, there's only monsters you'll be fighting, there's nothing else to gain really from there. So this is where another fast travel point is. So once you, I, I mean always go for it, if you see one in the distance, always go for it so that will be unlocked. Making it a lot easier for you to travel around in. Oh Jesus, oh, man I'm getting too fat and old for this. Um, but basically I think that is the majority of the sort of open world done there's not really a lot else to go in with it um, yeah if there is something I'll obviously explain about it but like I said a majority of the time when we are going through the open worldedness if there's nothing else to say if we're just going to a location obviously I won't be speaking at all through the open worldedness and you just seen what I did there with the H on the door that is the door that we actually need to get into and again so now we are into the expedition headquarters and again, this is another key evidence area, or an additional evidence area that we need to be walking around and grabbing. So just do all the things that I do on here. Someone smashed it beyond repair. So, in a few seconds you'll see the wavy lines on the edge of the screen. Now when you see that and go into Mind's Eye by pressing down on the D-pad of course, it's usually the sign of an omen we can follow to either a bit of key evidence, or in this case, it is a room behind a hidden wall. Now it's always worth keeping watch, although again, you know, you'll see, <laughs> you'll just see what I'm doing and do the same anyway. But yeah, there's a lot of times we'll be going through hidden walls throughout this game. But we're just going to leave the basement for the time being. Reason being, there is an enemy down there. There's only one Innsman there, you know, the fish face guy. He's got a gun, so, but we'll just collect the rest of the evidence on the top floor first. If that's okay with you, of course. samples glitter in a weird way. I wonder where they came from.
map of Cape Cod. It looks like there was something here, but it's been erased. Yeah, so you notice I just take my time. It's always worth taking your time and going through the room again if you feel like you haven't got everything or... So that's, that's why there's no point rushing through each room just in case you end up missing something or forgetting something. But yes, get your pistol ready. Press X to reload if you haven't got it. And he's right at the end of the basement here. One single headshot will do it. Blah. Hell of a noise to die with. But yeah, easy enough enemy. He, he shouldn't cause you too many problems. But uh, smash him out, and there's a few uh, bits of evidence and another lootable to get down here. So, you know, take your time, enjoy, relax. Because you won't be doing much relaxing a bit later on. And of course, just like in the first mission and every mission, every time you collect the key evidence, you see the retrocognition tear there. So go through that. Again, there's no point me sort of talking and yammering on through this. You just copy exactly what I do and pick the choices I do and you'll have no problems. Again, you know, unless you're blind, then you'll have real problems, which I'm sorry about that. We don't have time to pick it. Stand back. I fatah me a fee I regach I dig on. Burn it all. Make sure you get the adverts. Time to figure this out. We don't have time to pick it. Stand back. Grab the papers. Smash the rest. I fatah me a fee I regach I dig on. Burn it all. Make sure you get the adverts. Several men broke into the expedition headquarters. What they didn't smash, they burned. The archives, even the newspapers. So that is now done, then you should have 149 or 140 XP, obviously depending on if you got the DLC or not. A new Mind Palace deduction for us to deduce and uh, put some clues together. And yeah, now we can actually move on out of this. So we've now got a new casebook task, and our task is to go to the Oakmont Chronicle and access their archives. And I will explain that uh, all about the archives just when we get to it. But like I was saying, just with the um, retrocognition tier, like I said, I don't feel it's worth um, me talking over it. I think it'll just be easier for you to just follow what I do so you can listen out for the dialogue and then you can go from there rather than me going upstairs and then downstairs and then that one and then that one. There's just no point, trust me. I'm annoying at the best of times. And I'm trying to do a... Uh, <laughs> a Rockstar style... Trying to get into a vehicle and see if I can drive there. But sadly, no, you can't drive any vehicle in this game except for the boat. Which is a bit pointless, but... You're telling me that none of these cars work. Ah, that's bull crap. Anyway. <laughs> obviously head to the Oakmont Chronicle now. So just, you know, follow the same path I'm doing now. There will be a few times in this game where I'm trying to get to a location and I end up getting lost or I go down a wrong street and it takes me a little bit of a while to get this. So, I'm warning you now, don't always follow the path I take. In this early part of the game is fine, but later on I end up getting lost sometimes. So, you know, if you want to make your own way there, <laughs> you do that. I 
just thought I'd better let you know now rather than you following me and then you end up getting lost as well and then it gets you pissed off just as well as it got me pissed off. Um, right, so there's your warning for that. But now we are at the Oakmont Chronicle. We'll be getting another, another achievement right here and that's for giving an interview to this lady right here behind the desk. So again, copy the exact same dialogue options that I choose when she says I want to give an interview. Obviously, just make sure to say yes. It's only two short questions. You don't... It, it can be either or the questions, doesn't really make a difference, but you'll get an achievement for doing the interview. I'm a former Navy diver. Oh, a brave sailor. Well, I imagine you'll get a... Uh, maybe we'll have the chance... Currently? Oh. Yeah. I think that's enough for... My pleasure. Um... See you later. So now we can finally use the archives and we'll be doing this a lot to sort of piece together a few clues that we get from our casebook to um, get another evidence clue. So what you have to do first, with the D-pad, choose left or right to pick the appropriate evidence. And you'll always know when it's the right one as it'll have the little uh, sort of book symbol in the corner. And then what you have to do is pick the three um, bits of evidence from each three and then press Y to search it. So... Um, and then it'll come up then with a deduction of what you need to do next. Obviously, if the evidence doesn't match up, uh, obviously nothing will happen. It'll tell you you're wrong. But So obviously, just again, keep always following what I do on the archives. And you get another achievement for using the archive system for the first time. So congratulations. Nice and easy. So we know where we need to go now. We've got an idea. We've pieced together these three bits of clues. But just before we head out, we'll uh, head on upstairs for a couple of lootables. Now, right in front of you in this office, every time you come back to the Oakman Chronicle, these uh, briefcases and things will always be re-lootable. So, w which will be very good for us. So if you're ever a little bit stuck for ammo or anything, you can always come back here, um, back to your hotel, back to other places, and they'll always usually sort of be restocked with lootables for us to, um, well, loot. Oh, Jesus Christ, I'm getting lost. I don't know how to get out of here. Ah, there's the exit. Nice. So, like I said, thanks to the archives, we know we know uh, we now have our next piece of location, <coughs> which is the shipyard. So, press Y, we'll be able to pin that on our map. And obviously, where we're going is down to the docks, down to the number one bay. There's three numbers, put it down to uh, the first one of Grimhaven Bay. Like I said, you don't actually have to pick the very right um, bit of casebook evidence. You can literally pick anyone as long as it's a marker for you to get there. It really doesn't make too much of a difference at all. Usually, there'll be a boat there for you, but apparently not this time, which is just great. So, again, that may happen a few times. You may go to a place, um, a street may be blocked off. You might not get a boat there. So, you know, just <laughs> find, find your own way there. Also, another thing to point out, you may come across, like I mentioned earlier, you may come across some of these infested areas. Now... You get no reward for fighting them. You don't clear them out if you want to do them. All you do there is just fight a bunch of monsters and that's it. So, you know, if you really want to waste ammo on fighting a bunch of nobody monsters for nothing and no reward, then again, be my guest. But it's, it's always better to just go around them for that time. So, yeah, if you press the start button there, obviously, as you see me doing, press the start button, press the right bumper to go over to, you can go, go to skills, um, to upgrade your character and obviously go over to crafting and ammo so you can craft what you can with what equipment you have but of course 
in this early part of the game, we'll be trying to avoid using any ammo that we can. And, well, as you see there, I've already got an infested area, so <laughs> you can screw right off. I didn't go in there. It is nice. It does give you a little bit of XP, 38 experience points. But, like I said, that's the only thing it's good for. So if you ever come across one, and you'll be able to see, because it'll have, like, a whole bunch of sort of debris and all kind of stuff around it. So, best just to avoid it. Hey, where's my, where's my goddamn boat, damn it? So usually I'm pretty sure there's supposed to be a boat here, but, uh, you know, game wants to fudge me over already. That sounds good. It doesn't fudge you over that much, I don't think. Honest, didn't fudge me over that much, just apart from not giving me a boat. Nice. Yeah, so I might have lied. Um, I said it was easy to get around this first part. Apparently it's bloody not, because nobody wants to give me a boat, so I can't go anywhere. This is exactly what I mean. It won't always just be... I thought if I just head straight there, job done, it'll be easy. But a lot of the time you'll have to go a long way around. So, you know, be mindful of that. Because <laughs> you'll end up like me, looking like a dick. God, I ended up doing my own head in for this bit. I, I do get a lot better as <laughs> the game goes on, honest. Hmm, I might just have to fill these silences with... Um, if it, Did anybody see my Call of Cthulhu videos with my excellent epic jokes towards the end? When we were doing that long linear walk, might have to fill the time up with some jokes again, because I'm hilarious, right? <laughs> anyway, I think we're finally nearly there now, um, except I've gone down the wrong way again, so... Yeah, just... Yeah, this is the only really bit where I sort of struggled to get my head round that you couldn't just go straight to the marker. Eventually... So that's why I'm telling you quite early on. Go the long way around and you'll have no problem. <clears throat> and like I said, anytime you see any fast travel mini map points on the map, obviously uh, go and aim towards them. Gone the wrong way again, by the way. You should have just gone down the left alley there. But just to let you know again.
think that was supposed to be a scream, not a weird orgasm. Hey, hey, help! What's going on? See. I'm looking for Captain Sam. So we're looking for a captain, but we need to do something for this guy first. Now, there'll be two Stygians. If you remember, you fought them in the first mission, the spider-like creatures. Again, give him a whack. There he is. Just give him a whack with his shovel. When you get close enough to him, there'll be another one that'll spawn just behind you. So pop up. There he is. I mean, the shriek on it is pretty terrifying. But, um, yeah, nice and easy. So now this is another key evidence area. So, again... Pick up all the bits of evidence I do. Look at the dead bit of octopus if you really want. Sometimes with evidence, again, obviously you'll have to turn it around and just make sure it'll either be turning it around and interacting or it'll be mind's eye. But again, you'll see exactly what I do anyway, so you shouldn't have any problems again. Until you go back to the screaming orgasm, man. <laughs> Monsters sure didn't leave behind much. Gotta be out of your head to do this to a man. Now you see that creature just on the right hand side there? This is... It, my mind's eye is about halfway down now. So if it gets any further sort of down than halfway, then you'll start to see imaginary shadow creatures start to attack you. So if you, st if you see something like that on screen, Get out of your mind's eye or move away from any dead bodies or anything like that and just wait until it refills and then move on. They were in high spirits and plenty of them were drinking. This would be a weird artifact in any collection. Cape Cod. There were marks here, but they've been erased. So there we go then, that, you'll know when you've collected all the key evidence of course, you've got this blue tear, so we can go ahead and do another retrocognition right here. Ah, you can't take me in this! To the mayor with you! Ah, die! Die. No more drink. All we've seen. And you telling me we ain't allowed rum? Let's get a handle on what actually happened here. No more drink. All we've seen. And you telling me we ain't allowed rum? To the mayor with you. Ah! Die! Die! Ah! You can't take me! Eat this! For whatever reason, the crew went berserk. Only one man got away. So that's all the picking up the clues that we've done. All we have to do now is go back and talk to the screaming orgasm man. And he will give us our final bit of additional evidence. He'll tell us where Captain uh, Birdseye is. And we'll get all our XP. And then I'll look about for a few lootables before we leave. What happened on the Titania? It was horrible. Say. I got a fun. Saw him get away. Did, uh. No. So there we go, we've got our Mind Palace deduction now, we've got our XP, so there's just a few um, crates of ammo and um, other crap to loot that we can make earlier. By the way, what was that guy screaming at earlier? The, the, 
The wild beasts, the Stygians, were down the other end of the pier, and he was just safe behind a booth. Bloody fanny. So if you are paying attention to your case books, you will notice that Captain, Sla uh, Captain Sanders basically got injured and fled the scene. So it would only make sense that we would find him at the hospital. So that will be our next destination, of course. Um, now, just as we get back to the um, fast travel point here, if you take a left, what I'll be doing is pointing out where all the side missions are in the game as well. Again, I won't be doing them, only the ones that are related to achievements. So when you get to this point, there's a guy just on the left up here selling fish or selling something. And he will give you a side mission. That's completely optional if you want to do it, but I'll let you know where they are anyway. A fellow businessman. Charles Reed. Sure, sure. Maybe I'll tell you when the job is done. In my line of work. What can you tell me about the pride? Mostly rumors. It could be resting on the seabed. I wouldn't waste my money on you unless I had hope. Local drunkards. Good. See you later. So now that we've got that optional side quest out of the way, now we can move on with the main mission. We're off to the Hospital of St. Mary. Which is, well, you'll see it on the map now. So go to the fast travel point and go to the nearest one you can towards the hospital. Now remember that every time you use a fast travel point, this loading screen comes up and it's going to take about a minute, a minute and a half for you. So I've obviously edited out all the loading screens, which took a while to be honest. But we're coming up now to a missable achievement. Now you have to say exactly the same things that I do when you get there. If you say anything else, basically Dr. Grant, who is behind the desk, will ask you if you've got a headache. If you say, no, I'm fine, basically you missed the achievement and you'll have to reload an autosave before then. So, like I said, just follow the exact same dialogue options I do and you'll get it with no problems. I've said that a lot, haven't I, so far? You'll get it with no problems, but it's true. <laughs> So I just want to quickly touch up on why The Sinking City is better than Call of Cthulhu. And Call of Cthulhu was a great game, but i tell you why. I mean, it's just little things, the reason why this is better. First of all, obviously, you get the three manual save slots, obviously, plus auto saves. So it's harder to miss achievements rather than if you did miss something on Call of Cthulhu, you would have had to have started a new playthrough to get to a certain point, which was a bit of a pain in the ass, to be honest. The open world setting, as you've seen so far, is eerie, but it is just brilliant. Just little things like having to travel the places by boat and Manny Daniels in it if you get into the water, etc, etc. It's just absolutely excellent, and it does look stunning for such a depraved location. <laughs> if you agree. It, I mean, it looks pretty decent, doesn't it, for a bit of a wasteland? You know, and other things like having to preserve your ammo, you can't just go in guns blazing. Obviously not that there was a lot of guns on Call of Cthulhu, but obviously you're going to have to be a lot more wary about who you waste your bullets on. I think it's just 
absolutely excellent and it, and it does improve on Call of Cthulhu in quite a lot of ways. So here we are then, we are now at the Hospital of St. Mary and like I said we're coming up to an achievement and you'll have to see when he asks you have you got a headache or whatever you say yes I'm feeling a bit ill and basically you, you are agreeing to be experimented on. A visitor. The usual. Nothing to write home about. Ah, a chronic headache sufferer. And did you know that all of us are infected? That's news to me, Dad. Hmm. May I... Experimental medicine. Well, I guess it can't be. Uh, I... Uh, Reed. Mr. Reed, take these pills with some... Now, as you see, you do lose quite a bit of sanity, but you get the achievement, so you can go ahead and talk to him again and ask him, you poisoned me. Again, if you do end up missing it, just reload an earlier autosave. This should be like a minute or two ago. The medicine blinded me, and I... Intriguing. These... It looks like hard work in these conditions. You need a hand? Well, yes, actually. I'm prepared to face men. Ah, I can see it in your eyes. Well, I have taken it upon myself to study the wild beasts, but need more data to... Just a quick word on Dr. Grant's mustache. How unbelievably good looking is that? He reminds me of those sort of old tiny bicycle strongmen guys from the 1800s. You know the ones I'm talking about, the ones on unicycles holding up dumbbells. <laughs> and he looks massive as well, so pff, fair dues to the mustache. And the guy, I suppose. So once again then, we've got another side, uh, side quest to do, so if you want to go ahead and do that side quest, again, that's completely optional and completely up to you. They won't be in this video, again, only the three towards the end of the game, the one related to achievements, as I've said. So going back to the archives now, and the clue is Wounded Sanders, and then of course just pick the three as you see me do on screen here. So now that is done, now we'll just be going through the entire hospital, just getting all of the um, key evidence and all the additional evidence, etc. We'll also be talking to Captain Sanders up here as well. This is, uh, isn't him, though. I'm sorry. Bye. Again, you know, if you ever get any loads of scraps and stuff, there's no point in hanging on to it. If you've got enough to chuck a, uh, craft a couple of bullets and chuck them in your gun, do it straight away. Always worth checking. You know, every new area or whatever we get to, always worth checking out what you can craft. No point in holding on to them. What happened to your shoulder? I'm just looking for someone. Captain Sanders. <sighs> That's funny. The wreck. Oh, to the. I'm asking the. Yeah. Charles Reed. We had them. I think it'd be an un... There are things that... Maybe they'd still be alive. Did you know Albert... Albert survived? No. He didn't make it. Uh, I, I don't... You've got a good reason for leaving... You... Uh, you weren't there. 
We saw... Tell me what happened on the... We had a system. In the end, I sent a team. I was on the Titania before I came here. It seems you were all hitting the bot To stop them from rioting. So, the diving did enough. I don't know. Could you take me out to where the... No. No. I'm a Navy diver, Cap. I don't care. Do you know where I can get a good... My men got theirs from a local fact... Where's the logbook from the Titania? Well, I had it with me. Get better. So then, the next place that we have to go to is the Diving Suit Factory, which you will see me mark on the map now. And basically, once we get there, there'll be a couple of um, wild beasts, a couple of stygians, the, the, the spider-like creatures that we've already smashed out. Um, little few bits of evidence, few lootables, um, and the diving suit will be on the top floor, so nothing much to really look around in there. But we will be going for our first underwater dive out of about six or seven, I think, that we've got to do throughout the game. They're not too bad, they're easy enough, just a couple of minutes each, but, you know, you'll soon see. Well, I took the piss out of his backpack earlier, but fair play, this guy can run and he can also gun, so we'll give that to him. Uh, now, hopefully, obviously you've been following along with the guide, so you should have unlocked the same um, fast travel points that I do. Obviously, if you don't, then you'll have to unlock them eventually, and you'll have to find your own way there, sorry. <laughs> but, like I said, hopefully you've been following along anyway. So you'll be at basically the exact same point I do. Now this diving suit factory, then we've got to enter it by boat this time. So yeah, let's go find a boat. Fresh beers, fresh beers, just caught. Just overshot that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's go back. Just overshot that like a king. So it's time to get into the portion of the game where the monsters can sort of appear at any time and anywhere. And this is the first sort of case for it. There'll be no sort of location. You'll just have to listen out to the noises and the squelching from the underground. Sort of, uh, so see as you can see behind me first, and then there is another one that will appear randomly at some point. So just keep your keep your ears and your eyes out. Mm. 
nicely done there. So once they're dealt with, again, like I said, there'll be a couple of lootables about and the diving suit will be on the top floor. So no need, you can just relax now at this point for a minute or two before we go underwater. Now I hope that there's nobody playing this game that has the fear of the underwaterness. Otherwise it's gonna be a long, well it'll be a long couple of minutes for you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So that is the diving suit now that we've got. Now we must return to Pier 3 from a little bit earlier on where we um, met the Screaming Orgasm Man. I said Pier 1 earlier, what I obviously meant was Pier 3 because there is a boat there that we need to get to the location. There's no other way to get there. So again, find a fast travel point, try and get as close as you can. Have a nice time doing it. I'm a bit disappointed that time I was hoping to hear more of them screaming orgasms because <laughs> that's still hilarious to me. Uh, now the point of no return is, well, there's only one linear path to take. And now we'll begin our first underwater diving experience. Now, obviously you'll be in your diving suit walking underwater, obviously, so you'll be going a lot slower. While you're in your diving suit, you do have access to a harpoon and a flare gun that can be both used as weapons. You do have unlimited ammunition for both. You get an achievement for diving underwater for the first time as well. But the reloading time is long for the both of them. Um, the flare gun, in all honesty, is useless. I never used it once. Um, it's supposed to be a distraction for any animals that or any fish or whatever that tried to attack you. There won't be that many in this one, so don't worry about that. Um, so I just normally use the harpoon, which is the top on your weapon wheel. Now, what you'll need to do then is follow these lanterns. If you sort of go off the trail, don't follow the lanterns, you end up falling off a cliff and dying, so be careful with that. Sometimes it can be kind of hard to see as well, so, you know, I try my best to lighten up the place, but... You know, just take your time for the time being anyway. gun that's just on the ground here so use your mind's eye on this gun 
And now when you put it down and you walk forward, a big tentacle monster will come out and attack, well, this tentacle looking vagina with teeth looking thing. All you gotta do then is just make sure to equip your harpoon. As soon as you see him pop out of the ground, hit him with your harpoon and just run past. Immediately reload with X though, always worth reloading with X. So there he is, he's just popped out of the right for me. Usually you can hit him if you want, but if he pops out to the right you can sort of simply just walk past with no issues. So there we go, that's your first underwater, underwater diving experience done. Nice. Now right there it says key evidence collected, but don't be fooled, that is just for the dive that you just did. We've got to find key evidence in this area. <laughs> And look at this guy, he's lost his freaking head. Let's join him. Hop, hop, hop along, hop along, hop along, hop along, bro. Hop along, hop along, hop along, hop along. Yeah, I'm bored now, give me it. So, <laughs> we've got a little bit of evidence to find. Yeah, I suppose if you've been underwater for a while, or underwater caving, there's no way to get back. You're going to lose your head a bit, I suppose. So yeah, just again, we've got, like I said, a bit of evidence, a bit of lootables to find, so... Follow what I do and pick up exactly what I do right here. But for this guy, you have to actually take a picture of him and you have to interact with him as well. So if you get to the end and you haven't collected all the evidence, that's probably what it is. I think I better show Mr. Throckmorton. Hark, he comes! The sacred full belly. Bearer of what? <laughs> Cut the horse crap. Nonsense. Wake, you holy worm. <laughs> Sancta Mare, be our eyes. Eyes to see the distant stars. I could have actually just saved this a couple of seconds by actually interacting with this um, shell looking thing right here, but you know, you want to see all the cave, right? Maybe? Was it the focus of their worship? So I make a bit of an editing mistake here. When we go into the retrocognition tier, it gets a bit confusing. So this is the first one though. You see the camera, the little camera, or whatever, or that bit of light in? We enter the temple. This is the first one, okay? So remember that location because after I get all the cutscenes, I cut back to exactly where those guys are. So you'll see in just a second what I mean. But apologies if it seems a bit jumpy and you think where the hell has it gone? Okay. What? It's shivering. This is... No! Get away from me! I think I'm starting to get the picture. We enter the temple the moment they take the key seal. Get ready to cut up their diving suits. Okay. What? It's shivering. This? No! Get away from me! Forget them! Get the seed and the seal now! The expedition found an artifact that drove them mad. Then the Innsmouthers stole it and the professor in one go. So hopefully that didn't confuse you too much there. Hopefully you got it just as nice and smooth as I hope you did. So we've got some Mind Palace um, deductions to deduce and get some clues. Um, <laughs> have another hop along if you want, but to be fair, he's got, he's got some good core strength to be able to keep that up for a while. 
I get knackered after five reps of squats. Um, but we got some mind palaces to deduce here, get us some clues, and then just when you're done, interact with the diving suit to go back straight up. So as you just seen there, I chose to abandon the survivors, and once again, it's not it's not what you choose on the Mind Palace deduction, it's what you go and tell Robert Ape Face Throgmorton. And again, completely up to you. It doesn't affect any achievements whatsoever, but it's up to you whether you want to tell Froggy where the scientists are so we can come and collect them, or you can leave them down there to die. Two things though. If you do go and uh, if you tell Froggy to get him and he gets them, then basically what the scientists will do, will see, they'll spread their madness across the city, infecting people with all types of crap, and a lot of the scientists and a lot of the university will be, well, they'll be infected with the madness and hop around like bunnies and go completely mad. So there is that one if you tell him to do it, but if you tell them that they're all dead anyway, obviously you're leaving innocent scientists and innocent people down there to die, but... You know, sometimes sometimes a couple of lives is worth a lot more. But again, that's completely up to you. So you can tell him whatever you want. Um, and obviously that will affect your gameplay. Vastly different to mine. I tell him. Basically, I leave the scientist down there to die. So that's just my opinion. I am an asshole, but <laughs> that's okay. I'm okay with that. I'm used to it. So again, remember, if you've got the DLC, you can use your first aid kits and get a free one every time you come back to the hotel. Looks like I'm injecting steroids into my arm though. Get like Dr. Grant with his goddamn unicycle and dumbbells. Just before we leave actually, go back into your room if you've already left and get a My Diary Part 2 there. And if you want to change your clothes, obviously you're always more than welcome to do that, but there's just a little collectible for us to get first. So that's basically the mission over. Now we have to go back to the Throgmorton Manor and um, basically tell him what exactly what happened. Like I said, completely up to you if you want to tell him that the scientists are down there or not. But obviously, just be aware. No, no achievements again will be infected, but your gameplay might be a little bit different with people going mad, etc. So, but again, completely up to you. Now do you see the importance of deleting your <laughs> old markers? Because I just literally went to start going to that one then. So always important to delete your markers and make sure there's only one on the map. Because you'll end up losing yourself in the moment. You own it. You better never let it go. Go. Sorry, I'll stop.
big huge warning do not go where I'm about to go I very stupidly end up in an infested area and <laughs> as you'll see I speed up the video because it's extremely stupid but I end up trying to go for a boat that's not actually there so I end up having to run around like a little girl for a bit this is an infested area don't go where I've gone please find <laughs> your own way for just a minute the stupidity on me on this early part of the game anyway was quite unreal In all fairness, I was actually trying to die so I could just reload a save, but, um, and look at that, a boat randomly appears for me now, so, yeah, hopefully you haven't done what I've just done and been incredibly stupid and gone into an infested area. If you do, it's probably best just to <laughs> reload your save from a minute or two earlier. Yeah, I, you know, I said I'm enjoying the realism of the streets of Oakmont. Not always, not always. Pisses me off sometimes too, but yeah. <laughs> and again, you probably wonder why I just didn't take out all of the open area, sort of open world sort of stuff. I thought I'd leave it in there just so you can sort of follow me and know exactly where I'm going rather than being confused and putting you straight there, if you get my meaning. But anyway, we finally made it to Throgmorton's Manor with... I'm not going to call it bravery, I'm going to call it idiocy. Hopefully you've done it with a lot less idiocy. And basically, he's holding um, the Throg... has touched him up well. <sighs> Bad news, Mr. Thro- Those degenerates! Your expedition found something buried in the- They captured Professor D- Ot Your men found- The Innsmouthers were lying. How did they catch- Seems that after the seal was taken, the Innsmouthers must have known. They... They knew what was going to happen. In One of the attackers was killed by... My expedition failed. My boy was killed. They have Harriet. And the artifact she found. That's why I hesitate to wipe their fish-faced kin. Find them, Mr. Reed. Not the gr... I'm looking into the... And your best source... Professor Doe shared the visions. She found something inside those ruins. There's also a more. I can be delicate. I have a. a colleague. I'm a detective. I don't care for your insinuations. I had a meeting arranged with Herbert. That sounds simple enough. Very good, Mr. Reed. There is one. F Discretion. Indeed. Here is her. Have a good day. So then, hopefully you accepted Throgmorton's side mission immediately, because if you don't do it immediately, you don't get as much goodies at the end of it for some reason. Not sure why, but that's what it is. But a delicate matter is one of the side quests we will be doing later on, as it does have two achievements tied to it. But for now, we're just going to keep on with the main missions, and this next one is Quid Pro Quo. Uh, slightly... This is one of the longest missions in the game. But still fun. So if you've been following the game and the cases quite closely, um, we'll know that the Innsmouthers who attacked the expedition crew were quite organised. So they were working as a unit and knew exactly what they were doing. So that's basically hallmarks all to the points of organised crime. So. What we're going to be doing now is heading to the police department to research similar recent crimes in the police archives.
we're at the police department then, nothing really happens here, you can have a chat to Officer Dingleberry right here, he's a bit of a douchebag, but otherwise there's nothing to loot, we're only here for the police archives. You and I have- No, let me be- Okay. You can. What, because this guy is such a knobhead, I'm going to call him Officer Poopy Pants the Second. Poop Pants Douchebag the Second. Yeah, that'll do. So there's our uh, new nickname for this copper. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> we are going to the police archives. The evidence we need is there. The fate of the expedition. So, um, yeah, just pick the clues <laughs> that you want to go with it. You need to be copying me with, obviously. So, if you read that report then, you'll know that it happened at the Fish Market. So, that is where we, we've got an address for it. So, again, I'll mark it down on the map and we can go to the old Fisher Kipper Market. Yeah, for some reason I got really confused about the entrance, which I shouldn't have because it's um, it's a pretty big entrance, so <laughs> yeah. We'll be talking to Anna first of all, then she is by a, I think a diagram of a fish, which is actually going to be, well it'll all come to light what that symbol actually is in uh, later on during the mission, but here is Anna by the diagram of an eye fish, so we'll talk to her first. Follow the, di uh, follow the dialogue options I do, as per. I've heard that I can find an org. You sure are. I happen to be a representative of the EOD. Please. Uh, Charles. <laughs> what is the EOD? I mean. Well, we are. As for what we do. Oh. How do you. Do we provide fish for the. And many, many more things. It's been great chatting with you, but... <laughs> Not so fast, Jar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How can I join? That all depends on what's... Huh. Well, I'm afraid... <sighs> the... Okay. Tell me more about this job. Well... Last night, someone tried to break into a- That's why we've been busy today, give- And you want me to find who- <laughs> Fine. Can Good. Thank you. See you later. So, if you are after any more side missions, we'll be doing one now. Um, not talking to this guy, you'll just have a little conversation with this guy, who... 
once again becomes a little prominent feature of a character later on. Um, but you don't really have to talk to him here. This is just for fun, if you really want it. And look at his eyeball. Seems to have been, I don't know, stabbed or something in the eye. You're a member of the Grand Family. I'll see you around. So yes, if you just go to basically the back of where this guy was, this is the guy Walter, the fish face selling fish faces for other fish faces to eat. He will be offering us this side quest again, completely optional. Again, I won't be doing it in this video, but if you if you want to do if you want to do it, get some more XP, get some more ammo and lootables, etc., then it's completely up to you. You need a I need you to place these incense burners. It's smoke that repels wild bees. Of course it will. Well, okay. See you later. Right then, so our next destination is a warehouse where they sell and store a load of fish. Um, now, you will want to go from the east side. If you try and access the warehouse from the west side, you will enter an infestation zone, which of course we're always trying to avoid, because as you've seen a little bit earlier, that's stupid. That is stupid. So then, as we approach the warehouse, get your gun ready. We will talk to a guard first, and basically you need to say, I serve the sea to gain access. And when we do, this is the first time the enemies can randomly appear. And it could be any particular monster, but the number will always remain the same, around 5 or 6 in this area. <clears throat> now, also, if you've not done any side missions yet, this could be the first time you, en you encounter, even, a Lithian. A horrible looking thing who spits projectile vomit at you. Sounds sexy, right? Uh, <laughs> when you shoot it, it will wobble to the side, so you need to be careful where you're aiming and you, that you don't go too mad. You know, just straight from side to side to avoid its proj vom, if you obviously don't want to get hit. But this area will be around four Stygians, the little spider dudes, and one or two Lethians. But again, keep your eyes and your ears peeled. And obviously, if you need any first aid, make sure to um, top up yourself with a first aid kit. I serve the sea. Anna sent me. <sighs> Can you tell me what happened? Barely got him with a harp. Yeah, that's uh. What did this burglar look like? Same height as you. That guy was as bald as. All right. Well, that's enough for now, Mr. Grime. Here, take the key. May the sea bless you.
So obviously then, as we've been doing, this is just another key evidence area, so we'll be getting all the evidence, key and additional that we can, to get ourselves some XP and all the lootables we can. Now the enemies don't appear for wow. me until we find an elusive wall down in the basement. Once I find that and get rid of the wall hiding the back room, that's when the enemies attack. But again, could be random for you. It's all easy enough that the enemies aren't really too difficult in this game in all fairness. But obviously it is, they could randomly appear for you at any point. So again, just keep keeping you on your toes is one <laughs> word for it. There's some kind of powder. Things dead as a doornail, but I don't see any wounds. So first it ate the fish, and now it's dead. That's troubling. Mmm, that catfish was looking tasty, all dead and crunched up and stuff. Uh, pff, nah, not even I would go that far. Now, best thing to do to hit these lethians with is your pistol. Don't waste any ammo from your, if you got the shotgun or machine gun already. Best just to use your pistol, that'll be your main sort of gun throughout the game for these easier enemies anyway. Questions. In all fairness, what I'm doing right now is pure paranoid looking about seeing if there's one other enemy left. So tell you what, because of the randomness and they can appear at any time, you do end up crapping yourself a few times through the game. <laughs> Which again, is another decent, is another real good thing about this game. Like I said, with Call of Cthulhu, again there were some, a few jump scares and it was very fun, but because of the sort of randomness of these enemies spawning and they can hit you hard if you're not, if you haven't heard them or seen them, they can hit you hard. That's another tense thing I love about this game. This guy must really be into his hobby to have such impressive tools. Professor Westerbrook never learns about this. Just a little bit more. Come back, you thief. I'll show you not to mess with us. Darn pests! Mayor, take them. Okay. Let's see what we have here. I hope Professor Westerbrook never learns about this. Just a little bit 
the fish with an unknown substance that made a noise which alerted the guard and chased him out. Interesting. I sure did. Turns out our friend here wasn't here to rob the place. He came to buy this. Well, that's what the evidence. Okay, this is horrible. Please. Don't worry, I won't tell her. You seem like a decent sort, Daryl. I'll, uh, I'll make something up. Thanks, Mr. Reed. Still. All right, so you, uh. Uh, can you remind me where I... You can't miss it. There you go. See ya. May the sea protect you. Right, so then, so that's some great news. We've got all that done. Got the key evidence, got all the evidence for another little XP boost for us right there. So we're going to be heading back now to the fish market. And we are going to, just before we speak to Anna, we're going to be making a manual save. Because we will be getting... Sorry, no, we'll be getting one achievement. And basically, this is for betraying Daryl's trust. So basically, if you tell Anna that Daryl did a crap job, she'll have him killed. So it's obviously worth making a manual save if you're, you know, if you're feeling nice enough. And you don't want to get poor Daryl killed, he's just doing his job. Then obviously... Get the achievement, reload your save, and then, of course, uh, choose the other option so Daryl doesn't get killed. So, yeah, any point right here, or just uh, as long as you manual save just before you speak to Anna. Right here. Right here is fine. I do it right here. That'll be perfectly fine. So, again... A like I said, through everything, you're going to be following the exact same dialogue options I do. Unless, of course, you don't mind Daryl getting killed. Either way, you've got to say Daryl did a crap job this time around. Don't be shy. We have enough I've got it. news about your fish store. Oh, I'm all ears, Charlie. It only looked like a robbery. I realize it's a lot to take on fate. <sighs> See, protect... I don't know. We need to... What do you want me to do with the poisoner once I find him? I'd bring in... That wasn't the deal. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'll, uh... One thing still bothers me. You should hire better guards. That chump was twiddling his thumbs and almost completely missed the break-in. <laughs> See you later. There you go then. As soon as you get your achievement, reload the uh, save. It'll say, I'm pretty sure the autosave or manual one would have done last, but stick with your manual one just in case. And then, of course, this time around, you can say he fought like a lion, and Daryl will be commended, even though we've just told him to skip town. So. That dude is long gone. Happy days. Well done. You're not an animal. Congratulations. I don't. What do you want? That was. Fair enough. I'll. One thing. Your guard was vigilant. He fought bravely, but. Good old dependable Daryl. 
Now, refresh. I know it very well. You were. Yes. Ah. You'll find. I've found what looks sis. Excuse? A dungeon. Chain. Oh, I've no idea. Oh, goodness. See you later. So then, if you go ahead and open your casebook task or your map, now we are heading to the Oakmont University, and once again, we'll be getting another achievement in that university. Um, and this is for killing a big fat explodey boy. And you'll see exactly what they are in, you know, in a, just about a couple of minutes. But we are heading to the university first. Um, we'll have to go to the basement eventually. So, once again, just like in the fish warehouse, you'll have mostly Stygians, but you get might get a Lethian or two. But again, it's around five to six enemies. So, you know, I, I'm hoping you're sort of getting the gist of the game and the gist of the enemies by now. So obviously you probably noticed that I do check my map a lot, it's always just worth checking your map just to see if you're going in the right direction or if there's any other roads that will take which will get you there a little bit easier. It's always worth checking everything isn't it? Let's go ahead and talk to this green dude first. Looks kind of like a, no offence, he kind of looks like he's hanging outside of schools in bushes. Why would you even design a character like that? Shame on you Frogway. I'm just joking, obviously. So anyway, he tells us that this bit is closed, so we just need to go back to the place we just ran past, actually, the um, medical part of the whole place. I'm sorry, it's quite late here, and my head is not totally with it. <laughs> but of course, you'd, you'd already know that my head's not with it if you followed any of my other guides, of course. Now there is a guy standing around with a side quest for us to do, but we'll go and grab him just a little bit later on. I do go and sort of try looking for him, but I can't be asked then, so 
we'll just go inside, talk to Samuel, and we'll have a look around for some key evidence as we do, and then head on down to the basement. Welcome to Oldmont University Department of Medicine. I'm Samuel. Uh, Charles Reed, private investigator. You recognize this bottle? Maybe... Hmm. Yeah. These tests aren't... What's up? Our lab is crawling with Professor Wester... So, if I do a little pest control for you, you'll... Oh, uh, but... Oh, I guess... All right. Yes. Excellent sideburn, Samuel. I don't know why, but all of these receptionists and guys behind the tills, etc., they've got some incredible facial hair. Dr. Grant still wins, though. <laughs> the strongman, dumbbell, unicycle, mustache-looking legend. Then, so now we are heading down to the basement again. Just keep your eyes peeled. There's going to be a couple again, the numbers may vary, but as soon as you climb this, then they'll start appearing. One way to kill a lethian, if you want to boost up your own big ball ego by shooting a lethian in the um, tiny testes to make your ball seem bigger. Hey, that's exactly what I've done, and there's nothing wrong with it. Um, <laughs> anyway, now, hopefully by now you guys have got either a machine gun, you should definitely have a shotgun, but by this point hopefully you should have every, every gun. We will be killing, getting an achievement for killing a big fat beastie boy. Kind of looks like... You know those stereotypical Americans that go into fast food restaurants all day? The, one, the ones with the dungarees? You'll see in just a second, but I'm just joking. I love you Americans. Please don't hate me. Uh, but basically, to take this guy down here, oof, he is a scary looking dude, it's going to take about 15 to 20 machine gun bullets. About four shotguns and a couple of grenades. Um, but, like I said, the easiest way is just to smash it out with your machine gun. If you haven't, hopefully you haven't had to use it, you, there shouldn't have been a point where you've had to use the machine gun yet. So, you should be good to go, hopefully. So just press this red button three times, and then as soon as he awakens and pops around the corner, smash him out with what you can. If you haven't got a machine gun, shotgun him, grenade him, anything. What kind of person would even touch this? Not to mention dissect it. Here we have it then. He's quite easy. Very easy enough to deal with. But also, if you're wondering, do you have to kill him? If you want to get all the evidence and the XP to go with collecting all the evidence, you do have to kill him. But of course, if you don't really mind missing the evidence and missing out on the XP this time, you could obviously just make a manual save, kill him, get your achievement, and then make a... Uh, uh, reload your manual save but obviously you know we're needing to skill up our character Charles here so always best you might as well it's only gonna cost 15 bullets or so, so you might as well Your lab is certified creature free. Excellent, Mr. Reed. You've done us a great favor. Okay. I've done my part. Uh, yes. We finished that analysis, sir. It's. Ricin. So, where do you get right? Ah, uh, I'm afraid that. Ah, crime scene. 
someone would- This is horrible. Who's got access to where the poison- Only Professor Westerbrook has the key. His- Professor Westerbrook's not here, though. He's been sick. Where do they live? I'm not sure, but probably- I'm working on that. I... I'll see you So we've now got the key off Big Sideburn Sam, I mean, so we can now actually go upstairs and finish off the rest of our investigating, I mean, he could have literally given us the key from the get-go, seeing as we are a private investigator, but, you know, some people are born knobheads and they just want us, <laughs> they just want us, just want to use us to do a favour. Um, maybe the born knobheads, I don't know. But anyway, again, we'll just be, um snooping around, taking a look at everything that we possibly can, ready to get our 149 XP for all our evidence searching. Poor won't budge. And these bottles look exactly the same as the one with the poison. By the way, I am hoping that everyone's okay with sort of being left alone and you just following my video without me talking over the top of it when, you know, we're doing the investigating. Hopefully, it's not too bad. Obviously, there's nothing we can do about it now because the video's on YouTube and you're watching it from there. But, you know, like I said, hopefully you're still following it all good. And, by the way, this is the guy for uh, the next side quest that we're going to be doing. He's just reading a book on his own. No fear of any wild beasts or anything, no, just chilling. But he is going to give us a side quest again, optional if you want to do it. Listen, I asked Windle to contact. Okay. Bye. Right, so now we know. No, now, no, now, no, now, no, who no. <laughs> the, um, Fish poisoner is George Cavendish. So now we're going to be needing an address for him, which means we'll be on our way to Oakmont City Howl.
Oh, this guy's having a bit of an episode. Uh, I think we'll, I think we'll just leave him to that. Mm. Uh, got a couple, <laughs> couple of guys <laughs> having the worst fight I've ever seen. It's all kicking off on the streets of Oakmont, yeah. So welcome to Oakmont City Hall. No need to speak to the receptionist. She's kind of a dick as well, if I'm honest. So just go to the left of where she's standing, straight back to the archives, and we the clue we're looking for is the poison thief. Obviously, like I said, you got that little book symbol in the right-hand corner when you know you're on the right one. So there we go, we've got an address for George Cavendish. The next stop is his apartment. And what, we're sort of coming close now to the end of the mission. Still got a few little things left to do, but you're basically choosing between George who is poisoning all the fish and potentially killing a lot of innocent people or siding with Anna who he spoke to first at the beginning of the mission. Now you'll see there's a reason why I say end up siding with George, and I will explain that in just a little bit. I know innocent people die from poisoned fish, but Anna's Anna's a douchebag. Anna's a real douche. Again, I will explain why in a, just a little while. So, while we are here now, make sure to click on the pram there for your first bit of additional evidence. Now, I said I sided with George, and there's two very good reasons for that. The first one, of course, Anna is a douchebag. And the second is, if we side with George, we get an achievement for it. So it's very, very important that we stick along with George, even though you might not like it. But if you want the full 1000 out of this game, you need to be siding with George on this one. And there's a point now, after you collect all the evidence and you get a re re retrocognition tear, George will come through the door and we'll have a, li a little interview with him. For the love of God, at any point, do not click You Deserve to Die. If you click on You Deserve to Die, George will attack you. You'll have to kill him, therefore voiding the achievement. And he'll basically have to reload an earlier save to try and get that one. So, obviously, you'll be following my dialogue options anyway, but obviously, just letting you know, be careful this with that. Cavendish guy did an impressive investigation, and the EOD is in the center of all of it. This Cavendish guy did an imp impressive investigation, and the EOD is in the center of all of it. Hmm. 
A lot of fancy dresses locked away in a dark corner for a long time. I'm starting to smell some deep family trauma here. I loved you. I always loved you. You will never understand our cause! My child is blessed by the sea! I'm leaving you! George, I can't live like this anymore. There's something I have to tell you. I don't care what your damn EOD cult demands, Anna! I thought the child was mine! Mine! <laughs> okay. Let's see what we have here. George, I can't live like this anymore. There's something I have to tell you. I don't care what your damn EOD cult demands, Anna! You will never understand our cause! My child is blessed by the sea! I'm leaving you, George! George Kevin. He had a wife named Anna. She had a baby that was not his, but blessed by the sea and claimed by the EOD. This caused their split. Who? Who are you? Calm down. Right now, you look... Easy there. Anna from the fish market asked me to find you. You know her, right? I should have guessed. It's not about what she wants. It's about what you... Hold on! Before you jump to conclusions... Oh, this should be fun. What's your good reason? No. That's ex- Some of those... And poisoning the fish would prevent the- Oh, you see... A rumor... What's Anna- As you- Uh-huh. The EOD robbed me of her. And then they hooked her with their nonsense about the benevolence. She became pregnant. Yes. At first, I was over the moon. She said it was- Blessed by the sea. There must be another way to deal with the EOD. But <sighs> They're resourceful, those su- I tried going to the police. They were no- So what's your next move? I- Was interrupted. I understand I'm in no position to act. Keep talking. Now what is it you want from me? Poison the rest of the fish. My agent inside the EOD reports. Your agent inside. Ah. Yeah. My my agent can arrange that. If someone. All right. Look. Uh, of course. But don't be too long. So we've got now a whole bunch of Mind Palace uh, clues to deduct. Again, you might not like his plan just because he's a bit of a jilted lover of um, Anna, as you now know the story. But of course, we want that achievement, so if you don't like it, I'm afraid it's tough tits. We're going to have to side with him poisoning people. And in fact, we're going to help him, so I hope we feel extra bad for that. By the way, there's actually a lot more bad-related achievement and trophies coming up. I'll explain when we get there. Not bad as in hard, but bad as in... You should feel bad.
So... Your methods stink, and your plan stinks. Still. <sighs> yeah. You need to poison the fresh haul of fish at the ER. I'll be back later. Yeah, we'll do. So then now our job is to go back to the fish warehouse and basically poison all the fish, you bad, bad bastard, you. Uh, but there's no harm in telling you, obviously, why you were siding with George. So, obviously, you get the achievement, happy days. But Anna, if, even if you do side with Anna, basically what you'll do is go back to the market, tell, tell him about George's plan, tell her about George's plan even, and she'll try to have you killed anyway. She'll tell you to go down in the basement and three guys will attack you and try to kill you. So that's why Anna can suck a big fat juicy one. We ain't siding with her and plus she doesn't give us an achievement. So a couple of people will die but you know, they were going to anyway. They'll probably, they were going to die by man-eating eels or drowning by monster semen or something. I don't know. So just be warned here, if you did cover for Daryl earlier on, he will still be here and he'll let you in with no problems, but if you were a little snitch and you told uh, Anna that it was Daryl's fault, there would be two new guards here and they will try to kill you, so just be aware of that. Hello again, Daryl. I serve the sea. Sea be praised. Uh, mind if I go inside? Sure. No problem. Daryl, listen to me carefully. If you want to keep breathing, you gotta skip town. Now. You're taking a lot of heat on account of that fish poisoning. The EOD is on it. Bah. Daryl, I'm saying this only because you're a real stand-up guy and I re- Fine, fine. Don't be a str- May the sea protect you, mister. The sea protects. So no worries here then, there's no enemies, all we're doing is just poisoning the fish. I get my gun ready, because I'm... Every new warehouse or any building I end up, I get into paranoid mode, to be honest. But, you see the ones, the boxes of fish with the sort of blue dots and blue marks on them? They are the fish you've just got to poison. There's about five in here to do. And when you interact and poison the last box of fish, you get the achievement. But, you've just helped kill a load of people, so... You know, um... You've sold your soul for an achievement. How does that feel? Tell me how it feels. It felt great for me. It was 15, 15 G richer, but uh, no, obviously not that bad in real life. So you come outside. Daryl is now gone. We've basically told him to get out of here. So we've made a friend and we've told him to leave. So we've done a good deed for the day. It balances out then, doesn't it? Uh, George will be on the corner just to the right of us right here. There he is. Look, looking like... I don't know, did anyone ever see the Netflix show Happy? Kind of looks like Blue, the main villain from Happy. Your contact, but he's already waiting for you in the basement. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, yes. <laughs> we decided to use this. Right, funny. Anyway, the pa- Bye. So we are now almost done with this mission. What we've got to do is now go back to the fish market and basically we'll be meeting a guy called Fred who is 
basically for the next mission we're going to need to try and get rid of him. And not get rid of him as in kill him, he wants, he's got information you need and we need to try and get him out of the city. So, fair is fair, but obviously it's always us who gets the weaker end of the deal. Now, once we do return to the fish market, you'll notice, as soon as Charles's fat ass can get around the corner, Anna is now gone. So, whew, who knows what happened to her, but basically, the guy standing there, Maurice, he is the guy, if you sided with Anna, Maurice, who was there in place of Anna just then, he's the guy that tried to kill you, if you sided with Anna, but since that didn't happen, happy days. So, go down to this basement where the guy with the side quest was earlier on. Jump over this box, and then on the right-hand side, through this door, this is where we'll see Fred. And this is where our next mission will basically begin, after we go and see the Hello. Tetley's Teabag Planet of the Apes Master. It's funny, you know. The water's choppy. The I know what you mean. But you're looking for a professor, though. No, ain't that right? The scientist though. How do you mean? You Slow down, buddy. Helping each other is not the same as... <sighs> Nothing, sir. You won't regret it. You've seen some of this city now, am I right? Trouble is, it's much easier to get... I need somebody to get me out of the city on a... <sighs> I have no idea. Ain't you a detective? There are people in... See, I've heard whispers about... Ad All right, fine. I'll look into it. But you're a lead on the professor. I know where they've got her. I can't... So then, now all we've got to do is just return, like I said, to the Tetley Teabags man, Robert Throgmorton in his mansion, to conclude this mission and begin the next one. Now, what is ironic, though, what's hilariously ironic, as we just look at Maurice in place of Anna, the game rewards you for making the worst possible decisions. Now, the two achievements that you got in this mission were for basically being a dick. But, um, so I don't know, I mean... That honestly becomes quite the general theme in the game. You start getting achievements for the majority of them being a bit of an ass. So, yeah, Frog, we're trying to turn us into bad people, but we just won't do it. Anyway, here's the Frog's mansion, so we'll just go and talk to him now. By the way, tell me if you notice something about Albert Throgmorton here. They've turned him into cake. They've actually turned Robert's son into cake. They made a cake looking like Robert Throgmorton's son, and they're eating this cake. How freaking weird! How freaking weird is that? Although not a bad way. I'd like to be made into a cake. To be fair, when I go, yeah, good shout actually. Actually, most of the EO, and for what it's worth, the only inn's mouth rest. Are you calling me? Robert, listen. Something needs to change those who fan the flames of- They killed my son for Kay's sake! I know, but what did you do to prevent it? You chose to brand them newcomers and leave them- No wonder desperate inn's mouthers would seek refuge from a- I shall- Ah, back to business. I'll continue my search for- Your task remains the same. You say we are dealing with an entire organization. Now leave. So then, this is the fourth main mission out of nine, and basically what we're doing is helping out Fred when- I mean, theoretically- Theoretically, we could have literally just put a gun to his head and he would have told us the location. But, since we're not that kind of private investigator, we now have to do some research. And our first stop will be the Oakmont Chronicle to do a little bit of archiving. So Fred's believing that there are some smugglers who can get him out of the city and those smugglers communicate in some kind of code using advertisements placed in the Oakmont Chronicle, which is why we are heading there. So, we've got the clue, so let's go and enjoy ourselves, shall we? And obviously we'll be going to a new location in this game, uh, the Seven Oaks Bar in just a little bit, and we'll be using that quite a bit for it throughout the mission.
So like I said, we've got our location now, it's the Seven Oaks Bar, and just remember before we leave, we've got the same briefcase and box that we can re-loot again. Remember, it's just in this office here, and it's always worth, every time you come here, always worth just um, re-looting. And it's the same with any building you go to. Any building that you've got to go to at uh, any number, a couple of times, the lootable boxes will always be relootable, so always worth just checking around and doing the same thing if you're running low on ammo, even if you're not. There's me thinking you could just go around to get to the fast travel point a bit quicker. Apparently you can't, there's only one way to get there. So, which is the other longer side, which takes the piss, frankly, but... Oh, there we go. We, ca we can't ever have it that easy, can we? Unless, of course, we're playing a rat alike again. <laughs> wink, wink. And that's not a bad thing, by the way. Um, so yeah, hopefully by now, at this point in the game, you've got the sort of... You know how to... Mark your locations down a lot easier without me having to explain every time I open the map, etc, etc. Hopefully you've got all of that down by now. So, that's why I'm not really saying anything. You should have it all down by now. And if not, then... Well, I apologise. Get good. <laughs> no, I'm joking. So, here we go then. Obviously, this is a new location, so it's going to be a bit of a trek. Uh, the fast travel point is quite a little bit away, but... Again, it gives you time to soak in the city. Well, the city of death, it might as well be called. But still, helps you to enjoy and... You know, enjoy the scenery. Smash a rat's head in or two if you want. Sorry to any vegans and things watching that. My bad, my bad. But taking the scenery, you know, this is... The one thing I do like about the open world, sorry I'm babbling on now, but the one thing I do like about the open world is that it's sort of, if you've just come from a big fight or you know you're going into a mission with a few monsters, this is just a nice calm sort of couple of minutes before we get into the nitty gritty stuff if you know what I mean. Anyway, I'ma shut up now. So here we are then, you'll know exactly where we are because there's a big ship sticking out of it. And just before we go and uh, talk to the bartender then, there is a cop in there with a, 
with an optional side quest for us to do if you want. He's right in front of us, standing on his own, so talk to this guy for the optional side quest. This is just for taking a few criminal photos. But again, obviously I don't do it in the video, just an option for you. Now here's something about it. Uh, of course. This place merely sells juice. We can talk. Uh, I know, I know. Still, the te You're the police officer. The case has fell to other detectives, but they've let Tell me where to find Here are three file cards. I'll be waiting upstairs for those three photos. Take care. Well, you'll be waiting a long time for me, mate, because I ain't coming back. <laughs> anyway, go and talk to the bartender. Obviously, he's going to want a favour from us in return for what we need to know. Of course. I've heard they're having a wake for Toothless Bob here. That may be true, but I don't know you from Adam. Prove you ain't some... Come on, you... <laughs> if you think I'll trust you just because... But you're still alive. Okay. I expected a package to be delivered eh? Got it. One more thing. If you don't find him... Bye. So then, it's our job to find the courier. We've got his last known location. Now, this warehouse is very close to a um, an infested area. So this time, you'll actually want to take the path that I follow so you don't end up going through that infested area. I mean, again, it's up to you, but infested areas are nothing but a waste of ammo for no reward. So again, be prepared for a fight in here. There's going to be a, a bunch of monsters, again, about five to six. It could be Stygians or Lithians, or they might actually be what are called Cochitians, I think, or Cochitians or whatever. But basically, they're little monsters that crawl on the ground with big gaping mouths, which can hurt you, and they've basically got one big vulnerable spot on their back. So when, when they lunge at you, move out of the way and shoot them on the back. You can obviously shoot at them from the front, but they take a bit more punishing. So they'll take a few more uh, bullets to go down. But I don't personally encounter one at this area. But you, just warning, you might actually encounter one. So get your gun ready. Get in and they will spawn again. Could be upstairs, could be downstairs. Always random. So just keep your eyes peeled and ears peeled.
So for me, a lithium spawned upstairs, and I knew there was good reason for my paranoia. So just be careful when you're entering this room. Ah, little spewy little shithead. Chuck your spit spitty crap at me. by something heavy with wheels. The blood's almost dry. Ooh. I've seen ashes like this before. Well, at least we found the courier. Yeah. He's just, just looking a bit get rid of a bony. Tell you what, any places like this, it's like a constant ass twitch, I tell you. <laughs> now, we're going to be getting rid of an illusionary wall with our mind's eye, but be careful, there is always an enemy behind here. Might be a Stygian for you, this time it was a Lethian for me. So I actually crap my pants, but be careful, there's an enemy behind this wall. but reeks of gasoline. Drock! Whose idea was it to hide the crates in such a... No mercy, boys. He's been asking for this. Get rid of him. Leave nothing but ashes. Understood? Done, kid. Someone talks to the cops behind my back. Their history. Get him, boys. Time to figure this out. Drock! Whose idea was it to hide the crates in such a stupid way? You're done, kid. Someone talks to the cops behind my back. Their history. Get him, boys. No mercy, boys. He's been asking for this. Get rid of him. Leave nothing but ashes. Understood? Someone was looking for a crate here and was brutally killed. The crew that did it were headed up by a guy in a wheelchair. Ooh, that's a bit of a nasty way to go, that, which is just unfortunate for that guy, but it helps us because we managed to collect all the evidence, which gives us a nice 140 or 149 XP, depending on what you, uh, DLC you got or didn't. But it always helps us, and now we can return lovingly to the Seven Oaks to tell the bartender the great news.
Well, I found your. Oh, okay, I'm He. The boss. Is there. They. Well, I... They're a newcomer. Okay, thanks. Here's your water of life. Shh, keep it down, pal. Not too shabby. No. Bye. So there we have it then. Nice couple of items for us. Thanks to the Irish legendary bartender. Always nice, that is. But once again, we've got another location to go to. Now, this is quite important. This is a choice. Basically, we're going to a place called Smuggler's Alley. Now, when you arrive, you'll automatically be in a conversation with one of the thugs. And he gives you a question. What does one do with a dog? Now, if you answer, the dog is rabid, so it must be killed, what they'll do is automatically take you to your boss, you don't get in a fight, and it's job done. Happy days, you talk to the boss straight away. But, if you answer either kick it away, or you would pet the dog, the three thugs will attack you, and they are very heavily armed. So, if you do decide to fight these thugs, you'll have to be... Very, very well prepared with your strongest gun and your strongest mental, strong-headedness. That's not a word, but you get what I mean. That's not a sentence, but you know what I mean. And when, if you do fight the thugs, they'll drop a note to tell you where their boss is actually located. But, once again, when you get to that location, you'll have to fight the rest of his guards. So, you know, it's probably best to just stick with what I do for now. And say the dog is rabid, so he must be killed. So, this is the location. We are now going to go into the smuggler's back alley, get all nice and sticky down there. Oh, no, wait, sorry. This is wrong recording. My bad. <laughs> That's the logo you need to find. Remember, the dog is rabid, so it must be killed. Then the next dialogue option after that will be lead the way. If you choose the other option, hey, you'll get in a fight with these guys and What do you yeah. do when you see a dog? Pet it or kick it away? I'd kill it because the dog's rabid. Right you are. You're a new one, huh? Just take me to your... So speaking to Brutus Carpenter, the main guy, none of the dialogue options really matter here, so you can pick what you want, but again, easier to just follow me. Follow my lead. What the truck do you want? Let's be quick about it, kid. I don't have the whole damn day. Let's just say I'm a private detective and leave it at that. <laughs> Cocky, ain't you? So be it. So. I want to smuggle. Yeah, a lot of people want to leave Oak. It won't be. <sighs> so. Normally, that tells me you're worth some. <sighs> Guess I have no choice. First things. Oh, you're not. No, kid. Yeah, I know how it sounds. All right, color me interested. I woke up in the crematorium inside a rolled up carpet. I managed to get myself- And? Me, kid. Some palooka where- So I decided to get out. Any thoughts on who'd want to do this? Yeah, it must be someone close to me. So I- uh, I'm vulnerable now. So where would I find the city's cream? Ah, uh, of course you don't know. I got it. Goodbye. So then, he's a crime boss, so we already know he is an absolute knobhead and he will never change, but that's just for a little bit later on. Um, now we've got some key evidence and additional evidence to find, as well as some lootables in this place, so of course, 
follow where I go and pick up what we need to pick up to get that sweet, sweet XP. And of course, by now, you would have accrued a couple of skill points. So, in the start menu, press in these, uh, go over to the skill selection menu, and it's probably best just to put it in... What I done was put it mostly into health and mostly into your weaponry. Of course, the choice is yours and you can put it into whatever you like, but I just put it into powering up my guns and powering myself up. I literally couldn't find that goddamn dead woman for the life of me and she was right in front of me the whole time. <laughs> so you can miss things in this game, so don't worry if you if you end up taking your time or whatever. Use mind's eye for this bit by the way. We got to dump this garbage. Baba Brute will be here any minute. Yeah, top marks for quantity, but so much for quality. Even my gear's in better shape. Funny thing. I found a dead woman in your basement. Now I don't- Quiet, you! You're scaring Mary, and the guilty have already been severely punished. Goodbye. So that's nice, another nice 140 XP for us. Now we are going to be heading off to the crematorium after you do your Mind Palace deduction right here. Again, choice is yours, whatever you ever want to make. But it's not your words what does it, it's your actions after. And in fact, we've got two achievements related to siding with either Brutus or whoever the guy was that tried to kill him. Again, we'll just come back to that a bit later on. So we're going to the crematorium. No enemies or anything to do with here. Just a bit of evidence to collect. So again, you can just take your time and relax with it.
before we enter then, well, what we're going to do is find the caretaker and he has uh, another side quest for us to do. So if you've been doing any side quests, obviously you know exactly what to sort of do in each particular one. They're quite short side quests anyway, they're nothing too difficult. But yeah, one uh, my mistake was he's right by the pillar and I actually drove past him, so... <laughs> He's on the east side, on the north side, but here he is. This is if you want to get another side quest for yourself to do. But, but I have no idea where to start. I can help you. Oh, thank you. And you don't need to muck up your suit, lug, and bodies. What's funny is you're telling a lot of people you're going to help them, and you're letting a lot of people down, so hope you feel good. Ah, good God, these climbing over spikes like they are soft marshmallows or something. Jesus. I tell you, the guy must have calluses and hands like kings, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, well done. We're letting a lot of people down, telling them we're going to help and we're not. The life of a PI, baby. Anyway, again, like I said, it's all, you can just take your time. No monsters or enemies here, just bits of evidence for us to collect, so enjoy it all. Take in the death scenery. Judging by the... Whoever held this poker has got to be covered in... Ah, it reeks to high heaven. What is this stuff? Someone tried to wash the stain out, but it's still slimy. Ah, it stinks. Someone tried to wash the stain out, but it's still slimy. Ah, it stinks. I need to get out of here before he comes round. Ah, another one for you. Burn him first chance you get. It's urgent. What by the angles is going on? Where... where am I? Let's get a handle on what actually happened here. Ah, another one for you. Burn him first chance you get. It's urgent. Why the angles is going on? Where... where am I? Ah. Uh, I need to get out of here before he comes round. Brutus was brought in by some group who had to deal with the crematorium worker. So, Brutus woke up, knocked the guy out cold, and escaped. So I hope that was a nice peaceful couple of minutes for you without my voice drabbing on as I have done for quite the majority of the video. Uh, get into your mind palace, deduce the clues and where will we be going next is the carpenter 
Mana to go ahead and meet Brutus's son, Graham. But once we get, basically once we get there, we'll have three Stygians to face the old spider-like dudes. So nothing too hard in there. So then we're four missions in, but, well, how's it, how is the game treating for everyone? You know, let me know in the comments below if you have enjoyed the game or you are enjoying the game so far. You know, I thought, like I said, vastly different to Call of Cthulhu, but so far, quite enjoying it. Probably really my only gripe with the game is it, it is, I suppose it is like that with the majority of investigation games, etc. But it is very back and forth. And it gets like that as the later mission goes on as well. You sort of you do an investigative area, and then it's somewhere else, and then it's somewhere else, and then it's somewhere else. And especially with the loading time screens, which can, you know, when they take about a minute and a minute half each, and all you're doing is going to one area and picking up a few things, then having to load load a screen to go to a next place, it can get quite quite tedious. But again. There's a lot more positives than negatives in this game, but like I said, let me know if you're enjoying it so far. And the uh, Throg at Morton Manor, which we've been to a couple of times, the Carpenter Manor that is literally just across the street from there. And once we begin here, I've actually just gone past the front gate for some reason. I tried climbing over the... <laughs> So I even look at the one of the signs which said, please come in, welcome. And I still try and climb over the spiky fence. But he went over a spiky fence earlier. He obviously cut his hands too deep this time. Uh, but we're going to start off the conversation with this guy right here. Another, another epic sideburn looking dude. Click work and we will have to go basically to the basement now. Got it. Get a move on there. You're handing out supplies, Mr. Carpenter. I could use some supplies. Here. Thanks. You're welcome. Bye. So, as you'll see, there's two guards blocking the way. We can't actually get up the stairs just <laughs> yet. So um, but there are a few, again, lootables and things to have a look around if you wanted to in the living room. But with us, we're just going to go straight downstairs. Like I said, three Stygians will appear here. And we just basically need to find a sack of potatoes. If I said the Stygians were in the basement, sorry I was wrong, they're right here, just outside, so smash, smash them up and you see the potato thief cowering on top of a car there. Now it's up to you what you do with this guy, um, basically we'll be taking the potatoes anyway, 
But you can either turn him in or you can just sort of leave him. You can leave him be. You can be a bastard and you can leave him be. Sadly, that's what I did. They'd only give me one portion. Even though... Sorry, but... I uh, have... Them's the rule. So take the potatoes back and we'll just be basically giving it to the uh, Mr. Sideburns, which is who was in the front door where he gave us the job. Now, like I said, basically we'll be speaking to uh, Graham Carpenter in a bit anyway. We'll explain to him what happened with the potato thief and why I said we'll leave him be. Graham will basically say, fine, take the potatoes back. So you can either do that and be the nice guy, or you can just be an evil son of a bitch and just leave him be. And that's what I meant by leave him be. All done. Great. There was one month. What? The sack was borrowed by one. You did good. I'm sure your boss would want to know about it. Uh, you're right. But now then, as you'll notice, we can now get up the stairs. The guards have moved out of the way so we can freely roam about the house. Of course, we can collect uh, the rest of the evidence that is up here. Now, uh, grab the note off the door here. When we go and speak to Graham Carpenter, you'll basically have to go through all of the dialogue options because two of them require... A, basically, two of them are additional extra evidence. So, obviously, again, you should be following what I'm doing anyway, dialogue option-wise, but that's just a... That's just me letting you know so you are aware of that. Just follow the squids then, we'll get the key. Mr. Carpenter? Yes, Graham Carpenter. How can I help? One of your workers is... Oh. Not yet. Is... I won't punish a man for trying to feed his family. If he needs more, let him come back. It may be that he'll need... Uh, no offense, but... I... Besides... Thank... I thought Brutus was the... Oh, no, not at all. My father st- Matt. A war wound. Don't leave just yet. There's a few more bits of additional evidence to get in here. Yeah, you don't get these for staying in your foxhole. Forgive me, father. For I have sinned. Hmm. I've seen... Paris, December 1918. Right after the guns stopped firing. Something wrong. Ha! Huh. Gay! Now, weren't you the one who called Robert? This has been empty for years. Brutus. Yes, that's right. Um. Ah. Uh, bye. What you making, kid? So, always obviously make sure to talk to any character that you possibly can. Again, following the video, you shouldn't have any issues with that, but we've got all the evidence we can collect in here now. So. Don't you have work to do? Uh, you know what? I don't actually. I'm a private investigator, so Sagma. Okay? 
Now, next up then, it's the Hospital of St. Murray. So we'll head back there. We need to be finding James Warren. We know that he is in the hospital somewhere. So just before we enter the hospital, have a look on this notice board here. This is for another side quest that we can optionally do. And now we can go ahead and find out where James Warren is. Uh, this is, of course, to do with the burning of the courier that we found earlier on. Go get him, all you cool cats and kittens. He's upstairs. Why did I just do a Carol Baskin? Good God, yeah. You're James Warren, right? Yeah, that's me. A week ago, a group of people brought an unconscious man to the... What well, makes you think I... You were supposed to cremate a man, listen. So tell me, who paid? How do you know about? I talked to him. I... They'll certainly kill you if they find out. No, please. No. They were talking about the Lord of the Woods. Or... It's not much, but... Th you got what... Bye. There he is, our handsome mustachio dumbbell unicycle strongman. So, we've got our little bit of evidence. Now we are off to the universe, uh, Oakmont Library next. And in here, you can meet a woman who... Well, she has a mouth stitched. But that's for a side quest we come into a bit later, and you'll understand why, but... It looks a bit freaky, so don't laugh, otherwise you go to hell. And yes, that'll be the same hell that Carol frickin' Baskin's going for feeding her husband to the tigers. Tell you what, poor Charles must be absolutely bloody knackered all this running, and he hasn't had a good nap for a while either. Or a bit of grub. Uh. Hello. Welcome to Oakmont University Library. 
Uh, Charles. I need to see your book catalog. Sure. Over there. And that's it? No payment? No threatening? No. Library public. Knowledge for everyone. Well, that's music to my, uh, eyes. Bye, Joy. Okay, I don't care. I'm sorry I laughed. She looks like something out of Abe's Odyssey, if you remember that legendary game. <laughs> but the archive is at the back, just past Joy. So here, the next bit, well, can be a slight pain in the ass. We need to be going to the Redemption Church. Now, when you enter, there will be an altar directly in front of you, as so often is with a church. And if you've never been to a church, then I don't know what to tell you. It's, you'll see anyway. But there's an altar right in front of you. And as soon as you inspect your mind's eye with it, you will lose about half of your sanity Plus, not only that, two cloth lethians will appear and, st and start shoot, start shooting spit at you. Now, cloth lethians are—they are just invisible, but they've got like that sort of outline where you can sort of tell where they are. So, my the thing that I did your best bet then is as soon as soon as you go into mind's eye and you lose your sanity, get out of mind's eye and go. Get your shotgun ready, go and shoot one of them, and then that'll make the fight a little bit easier. But just being aware then, this can be potentially tricky depending on the ammo and the guns that you have, etc, etc. But hopefully you should have an, at least enough couple of shotguns, um, ammo to be able to blast them into goddamn oblivion. Here we are then, so make sure you're all healed up nice and ready. Make sure you've got enough sh um, ammo for your shotgun. Get yourself ready. You'll have to knock the padlock off the front door, but like I said, as soon as you mind's eye the altar, then the enemies will appear, so get straight back out of there. Run straight, I run, just run straight towards the left one, and then of course, hopefully, you'll make the fight a little bit easier. And apparently it takes more than, <laughs> if you actually can, aim for the padlock, that'll be great as well. My game just lagged like a complete 
bitch then. So I'm really hoping that it does not happen to you because that just made the fight again a little bit freaking harder, which was absolutely annoying. Um, but yeah, so they were the two enemies then, and now we can sort of rest in peace. Oh wait, that's a bit morbid in the church, isn't it? But yeah, so that was the fight. Hopefully it doesn't lag for you because it just made my job a little bit um, harder then. Be aware though, there is a Stygian or two potentially in the basement when we go under there. But again, easily killed with the shovel, which is no problem. Now I got a big problem on this area. When I collected all the... Af after that um, bit of lag in there... Basically, I collected all the evidence, but the retrocognition tear, which usually appears just by the front door there of the church, didn't appear. But a retrocognition tear outside did appear. That's pointless, so there's never, ever any need to go to that. So if the same thing happens to you, if you have a problem, you collect all the evidence, or the game freezes, lags, etc. And the only retrocognition tear after you collect all the evidence is outside the church then you'll just have to reload an earlier save, I'm afraid. Which does mean you'll have to kill the enemies again, sadly. Um, which I had to do. So obviously just be very, very aware of that. The only retrocognition tier that should happen is by the front church, uh, front door of the church on the inside. But again, for now, just go around collecting all the evidence, obviously, as we have done so far, and just... Be mindful of the Stygians in the basement. Something's chewed this one up real bad. Ah, this is in good shape and ready to use. So yeah, as I said a little bit earlier on, then the retrocognition tier should be there, right in the middle of the church rather than outside. So if this doesn't appear, reload an earlier save. The stars are aligned, and a new turn of the cycle begins. The time has come to return to the mother's womb. Make sure you get every scrap. We don't want anyone reading these while we're down there. Take them to the crematorium. We'll just... Don't wait. I'll catch up to you. Let's get a handle on what actually happened here. The stars are aligned, and a new turn of the cycle begins. The time has come to return to the mother's womb, and we shall be reborn. Make sure you get every scrap. We don't want anyone reading these while we're down there. Take them to the crematorium. We'll destroy them before we dive. Don't wait. I'll catch up to you. A group of fanatics based in the Redemption Church got rid of several bodies, took all the documents they could, and dived. This area is done now we're going to do some mind palace deductions real quick and then we're going to go for our second underwater dive it's a little bit trickier than the first one but it's not as bad
I mean by it's not as bad, basically there is a lot more to do than the last time. So straight in front of us, we're going to have to use the mind's eye to get rid of this illusionary wall. But basically we've got a giant sort of squid fish that we need to get past. Now he can be a bit of a pain in the ass. So two hits and you're dead. Um, and of course we're going to have to start climbing on these rocks. Now you see the eye rock that I just sort of went past that that is our path that we will be following so if you ever get stuck of course just use your mind's eye and those eyes on the rocks will appear for you but obviously so yeah we've got a bit of climbing to do here the next part then is the we've got hot pockets to deal with and they just sort of it's just a bit of steam that comes out of the air as you can see directly in front of us but again they can be a slight pain in the ass if you do get hit simply hit um, obviously get yourself into a safe space and then hit the hit and hold the RB button or the R1 button of the PlayStation that will regain your health to total fullness so if you do end up getting hit yes just press the right bumper or the R1 button hold it until you are back to full health so we're gonna get through this little bit now and then just after this we are going to see our first Real enemy. The tentacle's not too bad. It's a squid fish that can be a slight pain in the ass. So if you do get hit, remember, just heal yourself first. Time to get your harpoon ready. This is where the squidfish is. Now start heading sort of more towards the right of the rock that you see in front of you there. This is the area that we need to go as the cave entrance is there. You see the fish directly in front of you? As soon as you try to hit it, press X to reload straight away. You haven't got time to be messing about. Just aim, shoot, walk, reload, and just repeat that. So you'll sort of see him there. He is, he can be a nasty son of a bitch. It's best to turn your camera around and walk rather than trying to go backwards as I did because I got obviously stuck there and I make a big mistake there. So again, just turn around, make sure you reload, you hit him, reload straight away, turn around. And at this point you should be good to go, but that cat, that might just take you a few tries. Personally, lucky for me, I, I managed to get through that once, but that, that might take you a few tries. But anyway, now we are in the underwater cave, and now we're actually coming up to our first and only real boss fight. And what is called the Fecund Mother. Not fucking mother, the Fecund Mother. It's basically this big squid, tentacly weird looking thing that shoots green blobs and all types of debris at you. If debris hits you, it's not too big a deal. The damage is small, but the green blobs do pack a punch if they explode next to you. Where, after you talk to this guy, uh, this guy and another guy will attack you, so we'll need to get rid of them first. And But what you can do with the green blobs, you can actually pick them up and throw them if you want to save a bit of ammo. Obviously, the, the choice is there. For me, I just get rid of this ammo, so I'll kill these guys with the pistol. And I basically go stripped of the feckin' mother, and I just blast it with a couple of shotguns, and do the rest with a machine gun. I waste a few, uh, waste a few bullets here on this Ned Flanders looking douchebag. As you can see, but you can see where all the green blobs are coming from. Try and avoid them unless you want, and like I said, unless you want to preserve ammo, it's obviously worth just um, throwing them up and picking them up at this boss. Again, try not to waste ammo on any human enemies, just smash your machine gun out and it'll die pretty, pretty quickly. Again, you can use obviously any weapons, use your grenades if you don't want to risk it with the green blobs, but basically you'll get obviously an achievement for killing this bloody weird looking thing but you can actually get through this part without killing it you can just run behind it grab the evidence and move on but of course you won't get the achievement so hopefully i kind of explained it well enough you can 
take it out sort of as well as you want. It takes about nine of the green blobs to finish it off, but you know we'll just get it done quickly in it. A couple of sh couple of shotgun blasts and the rest with the machine gun. Job done. So just grab all the evidence and lootables and everything you can. Usually four humans will attack you. If not, if the four humans didn't attack you during the fight, there might still be one floating about, so just be careful with that. Once you're done here, run back to the diving suit to finish this part. Dead skunk. Well made. Pricey. Ah, oh, now that's a familiar smell. Like you dead skunk. Uh, are you my mommy? Where's my mommy? Right then, so now we are coming up to the end of the mission, and you've basically got to decide who you want to side with, whether you side with uh, the crime boss Brutus or his charity-loving son, Graham. Now, in this playthrough you see me do right here, I side with Graham because, you know, he's a nice, and he's a nice enough guy. Whoever you side with, basically, the other's going to die, and Graham's too nice to die like that, and Brutus is a... <laughs> well, he's a crime boss, so he's an asshole, of course. It really doesn't matter um, what you do either way, because we'll still be getting both achievements, and you'll see exactly how and where I do it. But what we're going to need to do, I'm just going back, collecting a few uh, relootables for the ammo that I slightly wasted, a bit pointlessly in all fairness, on sort of some of the human enemies and that one Stygian that appeared. But we'll need to be going, ignore that retrocognition tier by the way, that's pointless, don't know what that's there for. But we need to now go to uh, Graham Carpenter and just obviously explain a few things. But it's when we get to Brutus's hideout, the smuggler's hideout. That is where the two achievements will be happening. Tell me why you tried to kill your father. I know all about your plan. I... I knew. Crime has always been my family. So that's how it is. My father sent you. Yeah, you're right. I can change this city, Mr. Reed. I'll pay you if you need. But please, listen. Actually, I do need something. Ah, I can. If that... I'll think about your... Be wise, Mr. Reed. 
Goodbye. So there we go then. Graham has asked you to kill Brutus. It's hard because it is his dad, but it must be done what must be done. Like I said, it's up to you, completely up to you, whichever way you do it. The only difference is, obviously your gameplay is going to alter slightly, but, you know, it won't, it won't affect your gameplay too much, so it's completely optional and completely up to you. But we will be coming up to the achievement now, and we'll be making a manual save just outside of Brutus's room. So as soon as we get outside Brutus's room in the smuggler's hideout, you'll obviously see me do it on screen anyway, but that's where we'll make a manual save. And for the first one, we'll just be telling him that Graham did it, he'll sort him out, and that's the achievement unlocked, and then we'll make another save. Uh, then we'll load, reload that save, and well, we've got to go through about eight or nine, about nine or ten of Brutus's goons, as you'll see. just see me go through the relootables and uh, make some more ammo for my gun. Now when we reload the save a bit later on, that ammo will still be there and we can go through the relootables again which will be fantastic but right here then I'll do this one last relootable, uh, lootable box but right here is where it's very important to make the save. If you m somehow end up missing it you'll just have to reload an earlier auto save or if you made the manual save a bit earlier on. But very important to make a manual save right here. Just go in, let him know that Graham tried to kill him first, and it's, it's well, it's peaceful for you. Not so much for the carpenters, but it is peaceful for you. I know who's behind the attempt on your life, Mr. Car. And don't make. It was your son, Graham. M my my son. I am. He- Graham was in cahoots with these wackos? I'm sorry, Mr- Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, Thank you. Nice. So, let's go ahead, reload our save. By the way, how can Brutus see? He looks really fucking blind. Like, surely you'd be able to just steal from him or- Steal from him or something and- he ain't gonna notice, is he? Unless all of his other uh, senses heightened up, of course. Mm, I'll see. Right then, now we need to get ready. As I said, there's about nine or ten of Brutus's goons, plus of course Brutus himself, to get rid of. Now, what you can do, you can, if you want, talk to Brutus first and basically say, you've got to go. But what that'll do is make your life a bit more difficult because you've got four, um, four people in that room trying to mess you up but if we just go in there now shoot smash out brutus with the shotgun straight away that basically eliminates the one and then you can just quickly smash out the other two now my i had a sort of cowardice look about it i sort of stayed in the room and let the guys come to me um a few of the top guys of course having shotguns etc but of course hopefully you've got 
a decent amount of ammo. Even if you've got a couple of grenades or something, they should suit you fine. But as long as you get rid of the first couple of guys in the room, you shouldn't really have any problems then. So let's go ahead and do this. Always listen out for the footsteps so you know where they are. But they won't come in again now. I'll sort of tr I'll sort of try and coax them in now with opening the door and they'll sort of run past. But just do that instead. You know, instead of going out, you're basically in the line of fire. So just try and coax them out. There we go then. Obviously, I could have done that first bit a little bit better, a, l a lot better actually. But you know, we get through it. We get through it. Lucky for us then, this guy is pretty much unarmed, so he's just going to punch you, don't know why he's unarmed. But before you go down the stairs, there's going to be one more guy. Now he took me by surprise and I crapped my pants, so he won't come up here, but he is waiting for you. Directly in front of you as you turn right down the stairs now, so be very wary of this guy. Obviously if you need healing, do it now. So now you should be good to go. There'll be nobody outside waiting for you. That guy was the last one. So yeah, there's about nine or ten. So it's not too bad. I think it's literally just those first five or six people that sort of try coming into the room. As long as you can inject yourself with heroin, I mean um, first aid, you should be golden. Just be very, very careful at that point. No point being it, trying to be the hero. But there we go, that's it. You obviously got the achievement for killing Brutus straight away. So now we can go back to Graham, tell him his dad's dead. Sorry about that. And the mission will basically end now. So happy days. I said quid pro quo or whatever the last mission was, was the longest one. Sorry, it was this one. And I know it was very ammo heavy, but the next couple of missions are... A lot less ammo heavy, thank God, so we can start uh, rebuilding a bit of our crafting material and our ammo beanie. Your father is dead, Mr. Gar- This brings me no joy. I had to kill my father twice. It's all right, Mr. Of course I will. Goodbye. So, congratulations then. We are basically now done. You've done a good thing here today. You've done a very good thing here today. Congratulations. Well, you have, and now we've got to actually go back to Fred now at the fish market. You completely forgot about this guy, because I did as well. I thought I was done, but we've got to go and tell Fred that he's now free as a bird. Even though, you know, we got the shit end of the deal, we had to go through all of that, but... Hey, you know, we got some achievements for it, so... Beggars cannot be choosers, I suppose. But when you talk to Fred... This ends the mission and the next one begins. Nosedive.
done, Fred. The carpenters... Oh, perfect. All right. His name is Ebenote Blackwood. I haven't had the pleasure. Ebenote is a preacher at the fish market and a high-ranking priest within the... So I recommend that you... Gotcha. If the order knows something, it's a good bet that Ebenote does. I'll give you the address of the meeting place. You'll be expecting me. All right. Thanks. I need... Duh, fair play, the guy looked like he's hardly broken a sweat in his bloody life, but he's free as a bird and so are we, and this ends part one out of three for the sinking city. Thanks so, so much for watching, guys. Hope this video has helped so far. Don't forget, of course, to like, comment, and subscribe, and I shall see you in part two. Big love.